So fucking tired. Of what? Of, of all these technical difficulties. Zencaster's failing us. Your internet's failing us. Yeah, that's just life, though. You know, sometimes you're the internet. Sometimes you're the the not. I don't know. What's my respawn time like? The internet. <laughs> internet. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. We're going to a show later on. Oh, yeah. What show? Gojira, Mastodon, and uh, Lorna Shore, which those three bands are really not like each other because if you're like oh i recognize mastodon maybe i like these other two bands i mean maybe you'll like gojira lorna shore is gonna scare you though i don't like to be scared yeah i know there's gonna be a lot of people at that show trying to watch mastodon or gojira and they're not gonna be ready for lorna shore dude do you ever have like nightmares (laughs) what yeah but what (laughs) i actually don't dream i actually lay in bed with my eyes open yeah, and I just sit there until the I just fast trap. I what is it? You wait and fall out. That's what I do. In yeah, bed. you just you just see a slider that ticks by like in chunks of one hours. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, time to get up. Yeah, those, then the sun quick. is like moving to different spots. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, suddenly it's time to work. No wonder I'm so depressed. I I was having nightmares last night, but it's the weird thing about my nightmares is that I'm a sleeper that can like wake up whenever I'm like whoa 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 things are not going well. I'm out of here. Yeah. And then I just wake up. Like the second Dude, I see things not not going well, I'm just out of there. That happens to me as well. I think that's called lucid dreaming. But like if that's the very beginning of lucid dreaming where like you realize you're in a dream and then like you wake up because of it. And the people who lucid dream are the people who can realize they're in a dream and then like continue to dream. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. OK. I think I do that, but I'm not quite sure. I don't want to self-diagnose well, lucid dreaming and offend all the know, real right? lucid dreamers out there. They're probably a pretty strong community. You don't want them coming after you in their dreams or something like that. They're astral projecting into your dream, giving you more nightmares. Dude, just like with with the dog. Powers. It's the dog in, in Silent Hill, you know? Oh, God. I don't know. It's like the dream police. Maybe they'll save me. But, like, uh, they're inside my head. Like, last night, I kept having nightmares. I don't even remember what the nightmare was specifically. But I would wake myself up. I would think about it for a minute. I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Get back in there. And so then I'd go back to sleep. And I kept going back in there. And it was like three separate times. I'd wake myself up because things were not going well. But then I'd wake up and be like, it wasn't that bad. Because, like, if I have a bad nightmare and I wake up and I have to wake myself up, I'll be, like, sweaty with, like, (laughs) fear. But then, like, if it's not a bad nightmare, then I'm like, why did I wake myself up? What am I doing? Dude, one time I had a nightmare so bad in high school, like I was with my high school girlfriend at the time and she was in bed with me and she thought I was having a seizure. Like I was like gripping into her, like we were like playing together. <laughs> He's fine for his life over here. Yeah. And it was a wild nightmare too. It, it, it was uh, the only reason I remember it is because you know how like you wake up and you're like, you remember the nightmare vividly and it starts to like fade away, like vapors slipping through your fingers. It starts oh to fade God. away. So, like, right away, I was telling her the story. And then she was like, wow, that's incredible. She was like, you should write that down. And that's like, and so I remember it vividly, but it's like, do I? Or do I really remember just the story I made up? Because dreams really are just kind of loose. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes oh, they have yeah. a pretty strict narrative. But usually you're just dropped in the middle of it. And there's already a bunch of established lore. You know what I mean? It's like the, bet <laughs> yeah, you're wondering yeah, how I got here totally. kind of thing. Oh, my God. So stupid. Hello and welcome to Gaming Together Cooperative Podcast. I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here with my co partner, Nave. Each pod, we play through cooperative experience and relate to you, the listener, if this game is the creme de la creme of co op or something better off playing solo. Hey, Nave. Hello. I don't remember what we've done this. We've done this intro like three times now. Yeah, this is round three. Troubles. <clears throat> yeah. It's a little annoying. So we're not nearly as annoyed as we were before. We kind of just accepted that this is going to suck, but actually, it's working out really great. And I think that's probably what this, that's the lesson that Zencaster was trying to teach us all along. You know what I mean? To just kind of yeah, go with it. You just got to take the fatalist view of life is going to give you what it's going to get. And you just got to lemon, lemons that bitch. <laughs> yeah, lemons that bitch, Philip. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing right now. Uh, you ever we're, drink, we're the, you ever heard of youngling beer? Y-U-E-N-G-L-I-N-G. Are you messing with me right now? What do you mean? Is this popular yeah, beer? Yingers. Yeah, Yingling, yingers. is that what it's called? It's ying o'clock. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it. It does. It would be pronounced that, wouldn't it? Yingling. I'm pretty cause... sure me and JP were drinking those. Like, and you're like, "What are you guys drinking? Some uh, Dr. Peppers?" And I'm like, "No, it's American." 
Yeah. Yeah, I've Humans. literally never seen them before. And then so I, I went to August Burns Ray with my friend Jesse and one of his friends. And they were selling these at the bar. And they had never been selling them before. So I was like, okay, this is weird. So I'm thinking maybe this thing just kind of missed Oklahoma. Because, you know, I'm assuming Texas, you get a lot of different kinds of beers. Yingling is actually probably my favorite beer. And I started drinking really? them in Florida. Yeah. They're they're pretty nice. You know, they're kind of smooth. They're not that bad. No, they're they're very tame as far as I think beer flavors go. Because... Beer has a range of flavors to be like, oh man, that's so savory. To is this literal dog water? Like <laughs> this tastes terrible. <laughs> like, well, if I you like this, this, I would like maybe import some Orion. I don't know if you have an Asian market nearby, like near your we house. Uh, you Maybe. should go there. You should, do you ever go there and just walk around and like there's like fish just out. <laughs> You're like, whoa, look yeah. at that. <laughs> you walk by and you slap them on the fin. You're like, high five. Yeah, and then you get kicked out right away. <laughs> like, no, why are you touching no. all the food? The first time hand? I went to an Asian market, uh, my coworker Kim, uh, he was like, "Oh man!" Uh, first we went out, we ate Korean barbecue together, and a little little guy date. And then he's like, "We got to go to the Korean market." I'm like, "You know, we got to begin back or whatever." And he's like, "It's next door," and I'm like, "Of course it is." And then we will go next door. <laughs> And he bought me Korean ice cream and we looked at everything and he explained Dude. to me the differences between good and bad boba when you're making homemade boba. It's incredible, though, because it's like all, all these different like like ethnic communities. They always there's like little hubs because that's like it's like that here in Oklahoma City. There's spots in Oklahoma City where like all the signs are in Spanish. It's fucking really? awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. And like there, there's an Asian area. There used to be an Asian market really close to my apartment, but they moved. But all the Asian restaurants are still there. So that's where I always go and eat Thai or like pho or stuff like that. Like I, I fucking love it over there. I really miss the Asian market because they used to sell this beer called Orion, which comes in this huge bottle. Like if you have a pint glass, it would be like a pint glass and two thirds. Like that's how big it is. I used to drink it at this ramen shop all the time and I fucking really miss it. And th- and they moved like across the city. So it's like really a- 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 obnoxious to get to it now. You know where this beer is from? It's from Japan. I think it's from Okinawa. There's a reason why it's called Orion. I can't remember because there's like all kinds of like cool like symbolism on the bottle and stuff. And the bottle's really big and cool. Like if you if you collect bottles like some people do, you know, that'd be one of those that you might want to grab. If you like Yinglings, you might like Orion because this tastes like a not as flavorful Orion. Makes you think of Shin Chan. Whenever they would open up a beer, it would be like a big beer bottle, the big beer. In the Dude, I think that's it. Cups. Yeah, I think they're probably drinking Orion. I had to go back and look because I've only been drinking Orion for like four years. Like, I mean, you know, occasionally for four years. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how often do you watch Shin Chan? Not really that often. You know, they have a video game now. Yeah, I saw that too, but it looked. Um... I don't know, it looked kind of weird as far as, uh, like, I have not seen, I'm not in the Shin Chan lore, but, you know, I watched all the episodes, like, 10 years ago, but there was, like, dinosaurs and stuff. It looked very, like, yeah. fantasy. It looked well, like the thing, the I South think Park Shin Chan almost. in Japan is a lot more wholesome than it is in America. I think it's, like, an MXC situation. You know what I mean? Oh, really? Like, you think the yeah. dub is, like, even more extreme? than? Well, yeah, the dub, they're talking it. about, like, abortion and shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, this guy is woke, bro. This little kid is, like, awakened <laughs> right guy, now. Yeah, this five-year-old boy. Yeah, the <laughs> they're, talking, show, they're doing, you... like, Bill Clinton impressions. And I oh, even as a kid, I was like, I wonder what they're actually saying. You know what I mean? I didn't think about that. Like, I wonder, like... How, how localized was it? Yeah, because I don't know if any if the listeners you got to watch look up MXC. There is a Twitch channel that just plays MXC episodes, just streams them all the time, twenty four seven. I don't know if they're still up. I'm pretty sure they are. But um, MXC is basically uh, what is it? Wipeout or Ninja Warrior? Essentially, Wipeout's the funny Ninja Warrior, and MXC is yeah, the funny Wipeout. Is. Essentially, and MXC it used to be called Takahashi's Castle. But um, and that's the Japanese version. It's very similar to how like Power Rangers is here, and then it's uh, Super Sentai or whatever in Japan. Yeah, that's it. Right. Um. Uh. In MXC, it's all dubbed by like four different American comedians, and they and it's so fucking funny. But MXC in itself is uh, or or Taka- Takahashi's Castle in itself is so fucking funny. Like it is so crazy and wacky. So that they're crazy and wacky like american like comedy on top of it it just it puts it over the top it's so great and they fall and hurt themselves so badly on that show like (laughs) full-on sprinting on these like one of the best ones is there's like rocks on the water and you have to full-on sprint to the other side and half of the rocks will sink if you fall it's called sinkers and floaters so if you step on a rock that sinks you'll fall straight down but you're running at mock speed so like you will crash crotch first into the rock in front of you (laughs) and just die 
You know what I mean? Or like even yeah. funnier. Like there sometimes there'll be like a little like Asian lady and she just jumps like hip like from one to another and she'll just <laughs> make it. And it is so funny when, she, when people like that make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. You guys have to watch MXC. That is if you want an insight into Nave's brain, MXC. You'll understand why I, I grew up watching MXC. You'll understand why I'm the way I am now. Yes. Perfect shit. But we are a video games podcast, and this week we're going to be talking about Minecraft Legends. But before we get there, let's just talk about the things we've just been playing on our own. So, Nave, what have you been playing? That I feel like that was like the mythical, you know, three times tangent. That was a tangent side of tangent side of tangent. I've been oh, playing yeah, Inscription, you're, you're though. You're going to connect the dots? Yeah, it's the Russian nesting doll. Yeah, I see you on this constantly. I can't. I, this is literally the only game I'm playing, listener. This game has knocked all of the all of the awesome AAA games that have been that have been coming out. I stop. I haven't beaten Resident Evil yet. I stopped playing Pokemon. I stopped playing Final Fantasy. I stopped playing everything because Inscription's kind of taken over my mind. Even Tokyo Blood Dragon. Oh yeah, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah, that I haven't it. played it yet. I, I just literally haven't played anything. So you know, on Xbox, you can sort by like last used. It just says yeah. inscription, and then it says uh, three weeks ago, two weeks, yeah, three or weeks. whatever, yeah, yeah, for everything else. It's I don't know, man. Inscription is really good, and I I can't stress enough how much I want people to buy this game and support it and play it. Uh, Philip has already told me that because I've been fucking nagging his ears off every like he said every time he sees me online, I'm playing inscription. I've been talking to him about it, but I I can't spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Because I, I went into this not knowing a fucking thing about it. And w- this game changes. M- as, the more you play it, the more it get, the more weird and wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing it gets. And I, it, and that's a, as much as I want to say. Like, if you like card games, if you like subversive narratives, if you like meta narratives, if you like, if you like games like... Should I even say this? If you like games like Spec Ops The Line... If you like games like Doki Doki Literature Club, it's not the same as any of these games, but it is in the same vein of like these narratives that y- are going to take you on a fucking ride, like, you know, Marvel versus Capcom 2 style, you know? I yeah. I really really enjoy it. And it, it's not even the fact that it's a card game because I really like card games and I like numbers and I like roguelikes, you know what I mean? I like creepy shit. I like these awesome narratives. I like these like delete that part. You're editing this. Okay, me delete that part. But I like all of that shit. I really, I, I, I spoiled a little bit. Sorry, Philip. I spoiled a little bit for the. No, it's gonna care. be gone. Fine. It doesn't matter. Inscription is fucking really, really cool. And I've been seeing more and more people starting to play this now that it's on Xbox because I think it's been on PC for a while. I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter like posting screenshots saying that they're playing this, and I'm just like, good. Oh, good. People are re- everyone that's been playing started playing this just gets wrapped into it, just like I have. And I might be hyping it up really, really hard, but I just really like this. This is my this is basically my next Signalis. I think I like Signalis more than this because Signalis is more emotional. It means more to me. But I'm not sure because I'm not done with Inscription's journey, so I don't know where it's going to take me. But it's definitely uh, not what I expected it to be, and I love it whenever I'm being able to caught. I'm be I'm able to get caught off guard by games because that doesn't happen very often. I've played so many fucking games. And I've experienced so many different kinds of stories. And I'm not saying that this is like a, an amazing, like life altering story, but it definitely is changing the way that I look at, like the way that narrative can be presented in games like this. You know what I mean? It's doing, it's paving, yeah. it's paving, it's paving its way. Anyway, that's it. Inscription. You know, when you talk about seeing a narrative in a new way, I don't know. It thinks me more like how abstract things can be, but still have a compelling narrative. Like we look at like Thomas was alone. Yeah. Or like journey. We well, haven't played journey, journey but yeah, but it looks, it looks really uh, graphically moving though. Like I feel like, wait, is there any narration in that or anything? No, I don't think there's any spoken words. I'm pretty sure. So it's literally just images. Yeah. It's similar to Abzu. You play the Abzu, haven't you? Mm. I don't think so. It's well, similar to probably uh, better, but... Badoof's big bean burrito rollout or whatever. Yeah, Yo- that, that, that Yoko's uh, Yoko's mailman pinball. What is, Island yeah, Express. One. Yoko's Island Express. Oh, Yoko's Island Express. I don't play that one. <laughs> that one's on my playlist too. I don't. That game might have words. I don't fucking know. Ori in the Blind Forest. 
Limbo. Okay, yeah, Let's just keep Ori. doing it. How many Ori, games do no. we know? Worry <laughs> does not have any um, uh, text in any way at all. It's just grunting. Hey, Philip, have you ever had Youngling beer? Oh, my God. I think that's... <laughs> we didn't cut that part out. I think that was in this cut. We don't need Oops. to recap that one. <laughs> well, then, then the listener gets to see you behind the curtain. You're behind the curtain where we are... This is actually the the uh, fourth hour we've spent recording this one episode, dear listener. This has been a long one. Yeah, I'm actually two hours late to the show that I was really excited to go to. I haven't eaten. I haven't shit. My pre-show shit. <laughs> of course. It's All right, tradition. so games I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing uh, JoJo still because I'm the more it's like a sunk cost type thing where I know the more time I spend in it, the more I'm going to be like, I have to be Nave whenever we finally have our showdown. But also, I can't tell if I'm actually improving in skill or not. So then I desperately go to the YouTubes and I'm like, what? Give me some techniques. Give me some some training, some background skills, anything. And I watch it and oh, dude, there's not any coverage for this game this game is not really? well documented yeah like there's like maybe mm. two youtubers that have pri- provided any coverage on it but they're for characters that i don't like they're like you gotta play uh uh dazzling daniel and i'm like dazzling daniel sucks i don't want to play as him because did you look like at the, the uh, did you look at like tier lists oh the, the thing is like I've, i saw there was like two tier lists but both of them have marked themselves as out of date as of the new updates to the game because they were still updating the characters or like rebalancing them. Damn, the only thing really that seems no to be consistent. Now. Yeah, like no one except I did see that there was a moist critical stream where he played the crap out of this game for like a day. I bet. Have you started watching JoJo yet? Do you think maybe watching the show will give you like a new appreciation? Uh no, I haven't watched it, but since I started searching for JoJo material on this game, I do just get the clips now on YouTube or whatever. Like little like YouTube shorts, and it'll just be a section of the anime where somebody says something wild, and then just cuts to like I can't believe it, and it's like a dog. Because there's <laughs> one character that's just a dog. I don't know if you've seen with with a human face, human face dog. Dude, that sounds fucking amazing. It's pretty creepy looking. Have you played? Have you I, finished uh, Hogwarts Legacy? Has Jana no, finished? Still it? installed. No. Thing is, like we are like capital G gamers. We are always be gaming. But there's so many games I want to play, but it's just like, when am I going to sit down and actually play them, you know? Yeah, look at this. I'm just sitting here scrolling Twitter for fun while you're talking. And look, uh, Jordan from our uh, Woe Long episode has, has started playing this, and he he's literally just a little bit past where I'm at. This is going to, I mean, so you like seeing this. I've ever played. Yeah, but people are really fucking enjoying this game, and I'm, I, it, it warms my heart. I wish Signalis got as much love as this game is getting, but I'm I'm really happy. I'm not, I'm not spiteful. I'm not hateful. I'm not upset. Oh my god, I'm upset! But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I liked seeing the stuff. It's just seeing this lets you go. Oh, huh? You know what I mean? Because you're gonna yeah, play the game at the beginning. Not what I expected. That that is not how the beginning of the game looks. So you're already like, okay, well, I know the game is gonna look differently. So I'm already kind of sad that I showed you that. But oh, you've, you've been listening to me say, talk about it this whole fucking time, so it doesn't matter. What were we talking about? But I've been playing uh, just games we've been playing. Like, there's so many things I want to play. Like, I'll pop in for like two minutes and play Dicey Dungeon. And I'm like, this is good, but I cannot sit here and play this for some reason. I got to move on with my life. And JoJo's good, but I, once again, I'll do like three fights and I'm like, ah, that's enough practice for today. But if we're going to the backlog busting, Nave, I finally beat Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord. No, you didn't. I did. I beat the game. That's I got the Barbarian game. Victory. Beating. You know, yeah, you, you know, just now, ninety nine unlocked... hours to beat. By the way, that's what I was dreaming about was Mountain Blade Two. I don't even think I played this the the campaign single player mode, but I was dreaming I was playing it. That's weird. Yeah, and so I have no, I can't even, I can't, can't even describe to you what I thought I saw. Like it was kind of like a mixture between Dynasty Warriors and like Total War, but I know that's probably not what the game looks like, huh? Like that I was looking what at a the map. Game is like. Oh really? I I haven't played a single moment of the fucking single player, but that's I was playing it and like aware that that's what I was playing. That's kind of weird. That whatever. Uh, But that's my thirty sixth game this year. I'm trying to get a hundred games. I'm really into pick up the pace on this because uh, I thought I could clear like two games a week, and I have not done that for like five weeks. (laughs) 
Well, you fucking so, you hit the ground running before, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, but you kind of cheated because you had a you literally got right to the finish line of like five games at the end of the year, and you're like, hey, this counts. Well, no. Come on, man! Like last year, I was definitely doing that where I was I would like get a game where I'm like, okay, I I don't want to finish this game except for like one game a week, just so I can report back on it. So I'm always making progress, but. This year, I'm just trying to finish anything at all when I can. But then I'll hit a point where, like, oh, I'm going to play um, Tunic. And I get in there and I do, like, two boss fights. And I'm like, whoo, this is hard. I'll come back to this later. And then I rotate to Signalis. And I'm like, I don't know how to solve this puzzle. This is hard. I'm going to come back later. But then I come back later. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing in Signalis. Do you have any games that, like, any older games that you have in your backlog that you're just really wanting to go back to? No, it's more of the newer games. Like, even though we talk so much crap about Atomic Heart, I really want to play it. Or there are older games. Like, it's mostly, I really want uh, the cinematic first-person games. I want to play uh, Tokyo Hardline. I want to play Atomic Heart. I want to play um, uh, Prey, New Prey. Oh, dude, you should play Prey before those other ones. <laughs> Prey is so fucking good. Like, I want those super immersive first-person narrative type games. That's what I'm craving right now. My eyes have been set on Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, really, really badly. I'm like, I really want to go back and play that. Because I have such a weird relationship with Metal Gear Solid 2 where I've played it probably like 15 times over the course of like a dozen and a half years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, I've played it so many times. Ever since I was a kid, I was like, I hate this. I don't understand it. And it's always like a very similar experience. And I, but I've always been aware of how profound the game is. Not always, but like as I've been got as I've gotten older, I've been always told that like this is the game. If you like serious game narrative, if you like things that makes you like like think about the real world, like the end, the ending of Metal Gear Solid Two is incredible. And I see you smirking. You're like, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. But um, dude, dude the I've ending. Have you so ever seen? On, oh yes, like, I'm telling you, dude. So many YouTube like essays about the majesty that is the metal gear series i've spent more time watching stuff about metal gear than i have playing any of the games and i think i own like three of them at this point but yeah. i just haven't played them but i just watch stuff about them definitely play five because five is so much different so different than the other games that it's like it's the entertainment it values looks in the sandbox. Like a far cry it, it's not a far cry it's more like uh breath of the wild you know what I mean? Okay. Where like it's like sandbox driven and very fucking silly, you know? But like what I'm saying, like I what you said is like it hits it strikes home with me because it's like, am I running into the sunk cost fallacy with Metal Gear? Like how many times do I have to play Metal Gear before I just realize that it's not my game? You know? Like even though I really enjoy the story, like because I'm just like you, I've seen like probably a hundred and eighty hours of like YouTube like video essays just on Metal Gear Solid 2. I've seen so much. I like know Metal Gear Solid 2 like the back of my hand, and I've never fucking really gotten past the first like two hours of the game. And I think the most recent attempt was like maybe two years ago. Because I have the Xbox, I have the digital version of the Xbox 360, and it's backwards compatible, right? Which unfortunately, yeah. if you're looking for it, uh, I don't think it's listed anymore. I don't think it's ever coming back. I think it's just delisted forever. So you're going to have to get a physical copy on Xbox if you want to play it on Xbox Series. But. Dude, the the I watch probably like every three months. I watch the the ending of Metal Gear Solid Two, like just a YouTube video of it with no commentary or anything. I just listen to like the last cutscene where they're talking to uh, Raiden, and it's like it feels so weird knowing that I was a kid. I was a kid, and I and, and like the internet was in its infancy. It felt like I I can't I don't know the exact timeline, but that's what it felt like in my head. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was a kid, and he's just describing what what it feels like to be in like modern discourse on social media right now, and it is so weird. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I get like a really scary it feeling from it. Weird how it like dark mirrors our current day, but that also just makes me think of games that were more modern made, like the original Bioshock. Yeah, but even its narrative seems so politically charged, like. I don't know, like these, it's weird when these games get preachy like that, but it's also what I'm looking for in a game. Like I want an opinion yeah. in my game, but it is I, kind and of that preachy political. is perfect because it is literally preaching at you for like 15 yeah. minutes straight, like the last cutscene. So like I would, I literally woke up and I was dreaming about it. Like, what was it? What is this on the 27th? It's the 30th, three days ago. 
I tweeted about this game. I literally just put, I, I woke up thinking about this cutscene, and the line I was thinking of was, the different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. They're talking about the AI, like, like they're, they're trying to convince Raiden that AI should take over free will, essentially. And I was just oh, thinking spoilers. about that all day, right? Yeah, fuck them. The game's so old. <laughs> it, it's so old that if a modern person was like, I want to play it, they'll play it for five minutes and be like, I can't do this. This isn't These fucking controls fault. controls are dookie. This isn't Fortnite. You know what I mean? The controls suck, dude. They're so bad. They're so bad. The controls are so bad. But, um, <laughs> it, this that sounds so cringy right now. But, like, dude, I, I'm seriously, just, I've just been thinking about this game for, like, two days. And I just... Also, I here's an AI out here, Philip. Let's lighten up the mood. Here's an A. Someone made an AI art of a uh, G- Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> dash cam sighting. <laughs> oh, so she's just Sasquatching on the side. Yeah, of the road. it's Gwyneth Paltrow walking like a Sasquatch <laughs> on the side of the road. So stupid. Anyway, we got a little too serious there. Let's get out of this fucking whatever the fuck just happened. All right. Yep. Yeah, but video games, Nave. What did you buy? Uh, have I bought anything recently? Did you see me buy anything? I don't know. No, no you're buying, you just went to a lot of rock shows, right? Yeah, I I bought those these tickets a long time ago, though. So uh-huh. I bought a lot of merch, like a lot of merch and a lot of. Oh, I mean, I guess okay. So someone's retiring at my job, right? And so we went and had a party at a Mexican restaurant. And usually when I go to a Mexican restaurant, you know, I'll get some food, I'll get a Corona, and then I'll just let the Corona sit there until I get my food. And then I just drink water until the food shows up, and then I drink the Corona with the food. Enjoy it. But they were, like, doing, like, double shots of tequila. I drank, like, six Coronas and a shot of tequila. And I was like, holy oh fuck, I am I'm gonna lit die. up right now. Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? And it was in, like, the course of, like, an hour. It was like sixty something dollars of of uh, the fucking, and I I had like a a lunch special, like an eight dollar thing. So it was like all fucking alcohol, like the chicken like, quesadilla, yeah. and the six shots of tequila. Yeah, I and it was funny because like I never talk at work. I'm like a quiet boy. I mean, I'm like jamming out to music. It's not that I'm like looking like a school shooter in the corner of the fucking, but I'm like jamming to music. I'm just not talking to you. anyone walks up to me. I'm like, huh? You know, I pull the headphone out. I'm that guy. You know what I mean? I never know what anyone's saying. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to get my fucking job done. And uh, so like them being out of my comfort zone in that area, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. So that's what I've been spending my money on was that the shots of tequila and stuff. Nice. Uh, so, and kind of news, I guess. Uh, as for my job and like when I'm actually leaving, I don't know because I, t- I talked to my dude and my like, yo dog like I shot I, I I went through all the seaburn training I'm super qualified I got my shots I'm super vaccinated I am ready to go I've completed all my You're training You're turbo I'm vaccinated like, Yeah dude, You got I vaccinated so five times <laughs> And he's like yeah man uh, I don't know they just haven't been talking to me like I'll message him this week and it's like but if we don't hear back then uh, you know I've just, just got nothing for you and I'm like what do you mean you got nothing for me? And he's like, I, I mean, if they don't, if they don't email me back or anything, I like, I guess you're not going. And I'm like, you guess I'm not going for six months. So I'm yeah. open to find out next week. Like, of course, I would prefer to stay here, uh, spend the summer with my family, all my children's birthdays, including my, my son's first birthday, all Christmas, all that stuff. Yeah, we're but at also, the point now that we're getting close to you not being here for Christmas. So this goes on any longer. I know. I'm just so annoyed. Because the military is always like this. It's the government in general, dude. I remember when I was like, oh, I'm going to soapbox for a minute. I'm losing a lot of money and I have to, I lose my days off and stuff. I don't want to jinx myself, but they've been literally pushing it back every. God damn. Philip walked away and I'm angry at him. His baby's probably being wild. Arthur. Whoa! Look at Arthur's Arthur hair! Yeah, he's got hair. <laughs> Sorry, all that dear fucking listeners, Arthur woke up. He was sleeping on the bed next to me while I was yelling about the government. Yeah, and now I'm yelling about the government. They keep pushing back my fucking... They're fucking me with my money, and they're pushing it back <laughs> over and over again. And the, the it's it, this is what it's like to work with the government. Nothing is ever, like, certain. No, the deadlines are always pushed back. Everything's always put off and kicked down the road. And it's like, okay, good. Philip's not gone yet. That's good. But And I'm not losing my money. That's good. But it's the anxiety of knowing that it's probably going to happen that makes us fucking 
upset. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like There's I've been so go postal and military people are all committing suicide. It's it's not a good not a good time. It's very fucking annoying. I'm just I'm glad I'm getting I still have days off, but it's like I don't know. It's so frustrating. And you, uh, another thing, so you got you got all your vaccines and stuff like that. At what point are you a super soldier? Dude, I think? keep waiting for that. Like the Captain America, like I'm going to go from being a skinny rat to being super swole and six feet tall, but it hasn't happened yet. Do you think you could beat me in a fight right now? I don't know. How much do you weigh? I think I weigh like 160. All right, I'm 140, but you're taller than me too. So you got I'm me on the size taller. and reach. I yeah, don't but you, know. I do not work out all my working out is i lift up a box occasionally and walk to a door yeah. i mean you got the manual labor going on like i'm i'm literally at a desk job like oh i, I forget I <laughs> like i, forget I used a desk to job. actually have a manual job on the fly line but lately i've just been i just sit on my ass every day you have to be honest I, I thought you were still on the flight line even though you've told me a hundred times you're not <laughs> like nah, that's man, just in a, my I'm head when you go warrior now yeah Cyber. you're doing the cyber security yeah Oh, you got it. Which, <laughs> you, did you hear the recent business? Dude, with the, with the Discord? Yeah. Oh my god, explain it. Please, it's so fucking funny. I don't, I don't, I don't know the, the stories. JP was telling me more about it than anything. Uh, but apparently there was some leaked information from a... Uh, I don't know I, if he was Air Force. He probably was, because that's probably why it was so relevant. <laughs> but then it was like, just this last week, I got we got the email... Because I'm a part of like th- four different organizations. Because like we have like our wing, we have our squadron. Uh, I we work jointly with the NSA, so I I got them too. So I received like four different emails saying like, guys, we are reevaluating all security. Uh, we're having a security stand down day where we're just going to talk about not disclosing, you know, documented or you know, like was it like information that can't be disclosed, even if do you it's have to do like a. You have to do like a captcha, like w- click on all the images that aren't classified documentation that you should leak to the internet. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, God, it's so insane because, like, but literally, even stuff that's unclassified that is for official use only, we are still like under contract. You cannot disclose official use only documents, but people do it all the time, and it's just like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? There's how do you even get it out of work is like the next thing is like because of course you can always just like I don't know email yourself all these documents but then there's literally like a email paper trail showing that like why did you send yourself a 500 uh, megabyte you know zip document or something <laughs> like that we unzip it it's just full of all these pdf files yeah. that uh and, should not and be the shared. guy is like i have to prove myself right this fucker on the world of tanks forum won't listen to me that i need this oh tank to be buffed it's too weak it should definitely be penetrating the headser the headser is like a 50 year old tank you know what i mean that kind of shit <laughs> that kind of shit yeah of course i don't know you know the lowland know gorilla shake out but uh we are probably gonna get in trouble for it and that's the end of the <laughs> like uh, the, the lowest level always takes the brunt, you know? Yeah. You know, you ever wonder like, what if someone I knew that I worked with, like somehow got a hold of this podcast and just heard me bitching about my job oh. all the time, every episode. Dude, I think about that all the time. Like, uh, because you know, our names are actually like attached to this, but honestly, I don't really care that much. You got to talk to me at work. If, if, if you're one of my coworkers and you uh, happen to listen to this, come uh, tell me the code word. The code word is uh, unclassified document sharing. The lo- <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad code word. You're going to get fired, Philip. Maybe. I don't, don't do that to me. Don't approach me about what I do. Please don't do that. <laughs> It makes me feel yeah, nervous. Workers go make friends with him. Talk to him about video games. Like, hey, it man, makes what me do you scared. think about that? Uh, whatever. Oh yeah, talk to me about video games. Don't be like, hey, you know how you said this? I'm gonna be like, oh my god, I don't know how I said that. I don't know what I've said. I don't even know what we talked about 15 minutes ago. I have no idea Dude, what we've, I've said. I'm pretty sure when we had JP on the pod, we recapped three different things that we talked about on the previous episode we had him on, and I didn't yeah. even notice. JP needs to get new stories. <laughs> That's know. his fucking Boring fault. Dude. Boring right, guy. Point, Fuck you, JP, for not subscribing. We to are our currently, Patreon. I know, Patreon. <laughs> we are currently in development of our sideshow, uh, working title, fighting words, getting over here. I don't know. Uh, you're approaching me. Generic fighting term title here. 
But me and Ave are in the training phase for our final showdown on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Stars Battle R. And if you want early access to that episode, like a month early or something like that, be sure to subscribe to our patron. Currently, our patrons are Insane Cracker, Nick and Knight, Hobble, Michael Superbacker, and the Intergalactic Pinecone. Thank you, boys. Honestly, uh, the funding really helps a lot with, I don't know, how things are patron. starting to cost more money. Yeah, everything's getting more expensive. Dude, my fucking rent went up $80 last year, and it went up $160 this year. Oh, my God. Have you thought about and squatting and just not paying? No. No, because I'm, sc- I'm too nervous. You know what I mean? I don't. I'm not a rule. I'm not a rule breaker. You know, I get scared. I, I think that they're gonna notice immediately. But really, you can break like a million rules before no, someone notices one. I know, right? And then you know uh, what I mean. That's kind of the fucking government. <laughs> That's kind of working for the government. You've learned that. We seem to be getting very real <laughs> on this episode. But yeah. another thing, like when, whenever mood. I'm not watching cop traffic stop videos, I'm watching landlord tenant debacles and those are just as insane where it's like this guy hasn't paid rent in four months but he just hasn't been removed because of some random california statute or something like that where he's almost like grandfathered into living this place because he's lived there for so long but it's like who's in the wrong because the landlord was also trying to raise his rent or something like that and it's like you know i got rats coming out of the sink faucet that type of stuff yeah it's it's so fucking uh dude rats make me nervous too because I was watching this one video of a guy who, like, there's a rat in his toilet. And he was he was apparently on the toilet, like, about to take a shit, and there was a rat oh, in no. there. That's, That's when you so just you press scary. X to pull up your dukes, like, in uh, Oblivion, and you just start like, <laughs> wailing on him. And you see the just squeaker toilet, squeak, 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 every time. <laughs> Dude, and so I, like, I, meat. <laughs> I think it was last podcast on the left they were talking about it. But, like, apparently if you, if you call a plumber, you're just supposed to flush it. You're supposed to flush the rat the, back the down rat. the toilet. Yes, is that like apparently animal cruelty or something like that, or are they since they're varmints, no one cares. I would genocide rats. <laughs> I would genocide them. I don't. I don't want any of them around anymore. I don't give a fuck. I, I, sorry for all the people who like hamsters and shit. Them too. Like I don't. I don't want anything that looks no, like no, any no, of them. No. Uh, for the record, I really like rats, but I don't like to see them in person. Like, yeah, like, low poly rat is like cool. A, yeah, I love any global rats and video games. I love them. One of my favorite things to see. It's like seeing a, I don't know, like some people really appreciate a nice classic car when they drive down the street. When I'm playing a video game and I see a rat model in game and I'm like, nah, perfect. Ratatouille. I love it. Yeah, it's the, uh, but like, yeah, so the, I don't remember what podcast they're talking about, but pl- you call a plumber to flush, but to get rid of the rat and whatever, like he will just put the plunger on its head and then flush the toilet and then oh get paid God. for plumber salary for that. You know what I mean? And yeah, they're just like, it's the easiest so paycheck. Yeah, fuck them, dude. I think they can hold their breath for a long time, though, or no, something. Uh, I mean, the reason why they're somewhere. in the toilet, it came from up the, it crawled up the fucking pipe. That's where it came yeah. from. So it'll be fine. No, rats are apparently really good in the water. They got mad <laughs> swimming skill. Anyways, uh, a new game is on Game Pass that's a fighting game. Blaze Blue yeah. Cross Tag Dude, Battle saw, Special Edition. I saw that one too. I'm like, man, am I really going to recommend another anime fighting game though? <laughs> if Nave cleans my clock in this one, there's not a lot of not anime fighting games. Come to find out, dude. There's, I mean, there's plenty. Like, honestly, uh, this is a little bit spoilish. So I was thinking of like, man, I really need to win one if Nave beats me. So I need to have a couple back pocket picks. And so my back pockets, I'm like Smash Bros, but I don't know if he owns Smash Bros. And I'm not going to make him buy a $60 Nintendo game because I'm sure that price hasn't dropped just so Never. I could beat him in it. Yep. And like, I, I would totally wreck you in Smash Bros. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it wouldn't even be close. I would be the one having yeah. to train. And follow up, my next one would be like, okay, maybe Gang Beast would be my next one that I would challenge you in. Those count? Wait, is Gang Beast Beast a Smash Bros. clone? Or is that like another wacky, wavy, arm flailing guy? It's a it's a wacky waving or flailing type thing. Well, no, because see now here here's the weird thing because it's like is does Mario Party count as a fighting game? Because no, no, no. So okay, see here's where it got really edgy. Where I was like, man, is Spider Heck a fighting game? But I'm like, yeah. No, what about I, Stick I Fight? Okay, I would count Stick Fight as a fighting game. I'd fuck you up in Stick Fight. By the way, I'm really no, good at Stick internet. Fight. <laughs> yeah, you'd be <laughs> teleporting around like you're Goku. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. 
All right. So thank you, dear patrons. Please so go go support us. Nave, what's on the Twitter? No Twitter. Again, Nave. I had a beer. That's fine. No one's going to say anything about this. If anything, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember playing Minecraft when I was eight and I really liked it. I'm like, it's not, this is, this is in this game. It seems to have like, not a lot of like, uh, hype behind it, which I didn't really expect a lot of hype, but I was expecting to see some people talking about it. Like really quick. Let me look at the, so this is, uh, hold on. Okay. So this is what I do whenever we have a game in mind. What I usually do is I'll go to Twitter. I'll sort by latest and then I will filter by people that I follow. And then that's kind of like how I'm gauging, uh, which it's broken right now. Thanks, Elon Musk, you fucking idiot. Um, God damn it. Twitter's always fucked up in some way. Um, okay, so normally I would sort by latest, but now I've got to sort by top because <sighs> fucking reasons. And um, I just flip through all of the latest pic- posts to see if there's anyone really enthusiastic about the game. That's kind of how I found uh, Mr. Badbit to play Sea of Thieves. You know, that's also how I found Jordan for what did we play? <laughs> I'm fucking losing my mind suddenly. Is that Sea of Thieves? Whoa, long, whoa, long, whoa, long, whoa, long. Oh, no. Well, yeah, Tigers. You know, that's how I found a lot of people like this. That's kind of like my, my strategy. Um, Minecraft Legends, though, not a lot of people fucking talking about this. The only person I could find was uh, Eric from Game Positive was yeah, on my it. friends list. He had like 16 list. hours on it. Insane. Mm, yeah, apparently he reviewed it, so. Mm. Which I, I would imagine if he reviewed it, he probably reviewed it for uh, Seasoned Gaming. Get right into the meat since we don't have any uh, good tweets coming in. The music plays. Boom, 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 boom. Dude, you, I, have, you haven't been to a hardcore show, have you? No, probably not. The hardest I've so, ever been is like Coheed and Cambria. No, there'd be mosh pits in Coheed. Well, we weren't up front. No. Oh, were you like in seats? No. Phillips got a fucking mouthful. What is it, a moon buy? It's a ding dong. Phil's got a mouthful of ding dong. <laughs> um, sorry, oh, whatever. Go on with what you're saying. Wait, no, you went to the Avenged Sevenfold show with me, right? My very first concert. Yeah, but I didn't go in the front front lines like or the whatever. Uh, the pit is like in the cent- kind of close to the front, but to the more mostly in the center usually. What you want to do is like you want to like go from like the very front of the stage where the crowd is at, and then like. It's hard to describe, but go to the center and then, like, take away maybe an eighth of, of space or maybe a third, depending on how big, how big the venue is. And mm-hmm. that's where the pit usually is, is right there in the center. It's always in the same spot every single time. And if the place is big enough to, for there to be more than one pit, usually it's kind of, like, fanned out in the same way. You wouldn't be in a, you wouldn't jump in the pit for a little bit just for a second, just shoulder check a couple people and then get out? I don't know, man. I don't believe in violence. I don't either, but I love the pits where I get all the violence out. It's like, uh, you know how people, you know how in church people like fucking seize out and like start speaking in tongues? Oh yeah, I love That's that. like what happens to me. I don't even know, I don't realize, but I'm already in the pit. Like I've like, su- like there'll be a really awesome part in a song that I know and I am suddenly in the pit. But when I come to, when I come to, you know what I mean? I'm getting slammed into, I'm like, oh, I'm here suddenly. I don't know, man. I'm such like a social uh, anti-ist like just me being at a concert is already a lot. Yeah. Like I don't like to go anywhere ever. That's the thing too. I've always been scared of like like big crowds of people, but it just doesn't apply to me at concerts for some reason. I mean, obviously because I've been to like seventy of them, but so obviously I kind of like doing this. But it's like I don't know. There's something about being at the live show and like everyone around you being there for the thing that you are also there for. So it's like, you know, there's this awesome song playing and I'll look over to my left and see like a stranger just like feeling as much emotion as I am and then look to the right and there's another person like screaming or like jumping or something. And I'm just like, I feel so like I there's no place that I feel better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. every time I walk into the venue, I'm, like, the happiest I will ever be. And then when I leave, I am very sad. Like, it's, it's the worst. Oh, it's not it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking... It, and then I go to work the next morning, and I'm just staring at my shit. I'm just like, oh, my God. This is not what I want to do. You're like Neo when, whenever he's working in the office, and he's just Dude, sitting there. yes! <laughs> I'm exactly like Neo. It's like, I am Neo from The <laughs> Matrix. No one's <laughs> ever said that in the history of the world, but I'm the first. I'm more of a but, Fight Club guy, but yeah. Fight Club's pretty good. I, I like Taxi Driver. I'm kind of oh a sociopath. 
so, uh, but so in mosh pits, there's a thing called the wall, which is the outer ring of, or it's the it's the ring around the mosh pit, and there's a bunch of people facing the mosh pit usually, and they're just pushing people. Every time someone gets near the wall, you push them away. You wouldn't do you want you wouldn't want to do something like that, and because and it's like you get to push someone really hard as and you're not trying to knock them down. Don't yeah, do it yeah. maliciously. No, don't be a, someone's being mad at you. But um, so you're pushing people back into the pit, uh, and for free, and they love it. They're like, "Yay, you did that. That's fun." You know, you're like a bounce, you're boing off of like Sonic. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're literally that to keep the crowd out around the the mosh pit safe because there's people with like beers in their hands and shit. Essentially, you know what I mean? Like you wouldn't want to do something like that because I love being on the wall almost as much as I love being in the pit. I don't know, maybe. Then again, I don't go to rock shows very often because specifically for my deployment, I'm missing the killers because we already sold our tickets, but I thought it was going to be literally gone by now. Which, by the way, the killers, yeah, very misleading name. I know. I doubt there's a mosh going on for the killers, dude. I bet there's a song. There's one song that the killers they get a pit to. Hold on. Keep was talking. it jealousy turning saints Dude, into yeah. the sea? Swim Which, by the, the way, they what? play Mr. Brightside all the time. So in between sets, they ha- the roadies have to come up and like take all the instruments down. And then the new roadies come up and put all the instruments up for the next band, right? And yeah. they play music in between those. And there is always... Uh, there's always music playing, and and a lot of times there will be a song that will play, and everyone just starts singing, and occasionally a mosh pit breaks out. Like one time, I was at uh, yes. damn, what show was it? I think it was Lamb of God, and Chop Suey came on by System of a Down, and a mosh pit broke out in the fucking pit, <laughs> in, in the crowd. It was just it was just canned, like there was no one actually yes, performing it. It was just playing music. They were playing music over like a fucking Bluetooth speaker, essentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, like, so, you know, je- uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Brightside by the Killers is a song that people sing. Um, there is, uh, they, the reason why I thought, remember that is because, uh, that part, that jealousy, turn yeah. its face into, there's a part where he goes, uh, what, is, how does that part go? But it's just, I don't remember. That part, yeah, the, where it goes up, they, they, me. Pa- they, they muted the music. So all the crowd was just singing it. And then they right. started playing it again. And everyone was like, oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Because it was me singing. Uh, but they played uh, Man Eater by, what is it, Hall and Oates? Is that yeah. it? Yeah. And <laughs> everyone was like, she's a man eater. <laughs> everyone was freaking out. And I'm, and oh, I'm at a fucking wage war show. I'm at fucking. <laughs> I'm like that's the music, and then that God. song comes on, and everyone's fucking partying. I love live music so much. Anyway, the point of that whole story is that none of my friends are gonna go in the mosh pit with me. I'm really fucking upset at them. I always go in alone, and I always come back hurt. And they're like, they they're like, that's what I'm not get. doing that. I don't understand, dude. I just I just I don't know. I just feel it different. I'm built different. Feel it. I don't know, man. I got like free health insurance and all that stuff. Like I can go to the hospital anytime I want for anything and I'll pay a dime, but I still don't want to get hurt. Yeah, I don't have health insurance. So if I get hurt, it's going to be devastating. But that's the thing is that like mosh pits, you, you have to try pretty hard to get hurt. You know uh, what I mean? I feel like because... I mess it up. Like I'm going to fall. Someone's going to step on my ankle. Next thing you know, I got to explain to my first sergeant why I suck. Yeah, you do have to like make sure you don't fall. That's like number one, priority number one. But this is the thing is that you never find more brotherhood. I'm talking to a, a military right now. You never find more brotherhood than in a mosh pit, Philip. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, and that makes so much sense. I feel like there's a certain kind of person that's like he's like a group of people that are going to go for the mosh. And you kind of know why everyone's there. Everyone's there to have a good time. And yeah. I don't know, it, it makes sense to be a bond there. Yeah, but the moment someone falls down, everyone always, like, stops for a second. You got to pick that motherfucker up. And that's partially your job on the wall uh, of the pit is that you got to you gotta, you gotta make sure that that guy doesn't get stomped on or something. But very rarely I'd see people get hurt. Apparently, I'm Googling it, and on the, on the Killers subreddit, apparently uh, people don't really form mosh pits at the Killers shows. No, especially modern Killers. Like, I don't know if, like, he's always been, like, Mormon or something like that. But he seemed to have found more Jesus as he's gotten older. Uh, <laughs> old, What's his name? Like Brendan Flowers or something like that. So many of his newer tracks are more religious. So he's like, get, I think he's attracting a different crowd at this point than the classic days of like sawdust and hot fuzz. 
God, I love Hot Fuzz. That album's so good. That album literally makes it. That is what I think of when I think of Fallout Three because I was listening to that album all the time. That album and Tools Ten Thousand Days and <laughs> there's uh, a bit of a variance there. Uh, Hemispheres by Rush. Yeah, dude. I was I was a kid. I couldn't afford CDs. I just got whatever I got. You know what I mean? Whatever people yeah. gave me, that's the that's the CD I had. And you download it onto your three sixty. So I didn't oh, have dude, the CDs awesome. anymore. Yeah, yeah like m- m- for the longest time, the only CDs I had downloaded on my three sixty was like My Chemical Black Parade, One uh, X from like Three Days Grace, and yeah. like a Breaking Benjamin album. And dude, I think I had all those like, downloaded too. I, we probably shared them. That's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So it was like I would just listen to like these four albums while I'm playing Dead Rising, and I'm like, ooh, like. <laughs> <laughs> Paramore. Oh, and what was the Disturbed album that came out? Indestructible. Oh, indestructible. Indestructible. Yeah. Determination. Yeah. Better sink corruptible. God damn. I want to play Saints Row 2 now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Minecraft Legends. We're back or whatever. Uh, listen at home. We might seem like we're off this episode or we're in a weird place. Uh, let me just be right up front with you. Like, I think this game really fucked us up. Like, this game... Yeah, it was a weird one. It was so strange playing this game. Like I didn't understand it. And then my, my like I go to my wife and she's like, "Oh, you guys not gonna play tonight?" And I'm like, "I can't do it." Like literally, like last night, she was like, "Oh, you know, you guys never finished the game. Are you gonna you gonna get Nave on?" And I see Nave's on watching YouTube, and I'm like, "I can't do it to him." Like I I cannot physically make Nave play this game with me. Like I didn't even want to put it out there because I don't know if I had the the willpower to get to it. Yeah, this is one of those rare ones where we both came to the same conclusion of like, "Yeah, we're good." You know, like we and it was partially because I think I was making Philip a little upset, but um, we started on the hardest difficulty. And then, again, of course, I refused to go down. So I was like, no, I'm not because people was like, we can restart it. We can get on normal. We can get back to where we're at so fast. You don't understand because partially one of our problems is that we let the game go for too long. And we'll yeah. talk about it, but everything gets more and more difficult the longer the game goes on. It's like civilization. And uh, we goofed doing that. All right, so quick brief. Uh, Minecraft Legends, developed by Mojang, Minecraft, and Blackbeard, Blackbeard, Blackbird, who did Shipbreaker as a developer, uh, and Xbox Studios published this one, uh, released April 18th, 2023. So this one came out, like it's the 30th now, quick math. Was it like 12 days ago? This game's been out for 12 days, Nave. Uh, store description. Discover the mysteries of Minecraft Legends, a new action strategy game. Explore a gentle land of rich resources and lush biomes. On the brink of destruction, the ravaging piglins have arrived. It's up to you to inspire your allies and lead them in strategic battles to save the overworld. Uh, $39.99 Steam Store. So, not $70. That's pretty good. That's yeah, not $70. Though. I do... Part of it, like, whenever I was, like, just, like, preconceptions or whatever while we were playing this or whatever, I'm like, I can't believe, like, as we were playing, I'm like, this game would be the biggest waste of 60 slash $70 I could imagine. Like, if I bought this game, I would be, I don't, I don't know, like, I would just feel insane that I would waste yeah. so much money on this game. But it, it's a little more reasonable, $40. Yeah, forty dollars. I don't think I'd be that, I would be like, yeah, this is, expe- this is kind it of is expected. expected. This is a lower a tier game. game. The weird thing is, like, it's Minecraft. Like, we'll go around the pre- preconceptions. I hear Minecraft, and I'm like, Minecraft games, like, we we always give Pokemon a pass. Pokemon can make some crap games with, like, no yeah. innovation, but they still get paid for. Minecraft, ever since they put out Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft Story Mode, I'm like, these games aren't bad. Minecraft as a property can make some quality stuff. I haven't played story mode for the record i've just like seen people play it i'm like it doesn't look half bad it's not 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 my game it looks just like a basic telltale game i played or dungeons i was look dungeons i haven't played that one besides like two minutes i'm like this game looks like a good diablo clone clone but dungeons or minecraft flavored it looks good i got the thousand in that one yeah like these games look quality and then i see this game and i'm like i expect quality in my minecraft title this is weird it's like i want a premium disney whatever I want a premium Minecraft, whatever. And then we get in it. And for me to be so disappointed so quickly by this game, I just don't know how to feel. Like, I'm, I'm in a really weird spot. Because I had no preconceptions with this, but I just had a huge history with Minecraft as a series because it's Minecraft. Everyone knows it. Everybody's played it at some point in their life. I've sunk, I don't know, a thousand hours into the different versions of Minecraft over the years. What about you, Nave? 
I definitely, I'll go right out of the gate to say that I'm probably a little bit less down on this game than you are. Because I kind of, I kind of see where they're, like, what they're doing and how they're trying to do it. But I'm also quite disappointed in it. Uh, I'm very similar to you, which I, I kind of interjected while you were talking about, no, you know, Minecraft Story yeah. Mode, Minecraft Legends. I played the shit out of them. I got all the achievements in all of those games. Um, I got uh, most of the achievements in Minecraft and multiple times because of the, not because I played it a lot, but because, you know, there are servers that let you get all the achievements in one sitting. But um, uh, I really do enjoy kind of like the simplicity of Minecraft, similar to like Lego games, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, This game, I vaguely knew what it was going to be because I remember the Xbox showcase and everything, but I kind of thought it was going to be something slightly different. One thing that I regret is that we never played the multiplayer mode. True. And we also didn't play any of the custom mode because there's a build your own map mode or your own scenario mode. It sounds like Age of Empires 2, which is pretty neat. We mostly all of our experiences with the campaign right now. And yeah, I don't know. I really thought that I was going to enjoy this more because it I really do enjoy kind of a real time strategy, almost tower defense kind of thing going on. There's a lot of different things they're merging together. And for that, I respect it. And I think that's why I'm not so like angry about it but like i am definitely disappointed in how little i cared when i was playing and yeah all right so let's we both seem very kind of wishy-washy on how we want to nail this game down hopefully through this little discussion we can uh come to some finer points but just hours played uh i had 17 hours and they've had 11 hours a little asterisk on mine because you know i have three children uh, one of them is in driving school right now, which is like over half an hour away. So every night I have to drive there to drop her off, drive back, drive there to pick her up, drive back. So when me and Nave were playing, I'm like, all right, Nave, got to go. We'll be back in a little bit. And then I would just leave the game running. Found out this was very detrimental to our cause. Yeah. But so my 17 hours has a bit of a fluff to it, except I went back and I spent four hours one day just playing on my own on normal difficulty. And we'll talk about that when we get more to like the difficulties, but I tried this on literally the description is like uh, normal difficulties for experienced gamers for a balance of challenge and, you know, basically balanced g- game mechanics. It says it in the description for the difficulty, but I feel like this game is incredibly unbalanced in every game mode or every difficulty. Huh? That's weird. So let's talk about the mechanics real quick. In this, it's Minecraft, so there is base building. But all of you, the things you build are prefabbed units that you're just placing on a map. Yeah, it's very similar to, like, you know, Command and Conquer. Yeah. Um, but um, you're not building... I mean, you do build little structures to, like, make units, but, like, for the most part, you're building, like, I don't know, towers and stuff. It's, like it's kind of towers. weird. Philip messed with the building a lot more than I did. I was a lot more into the army. This is... This, We'll talk about it in a second, but that's kind of like the thing that I liked most about this game is like how you can fall into different play styles. But I don't know how you're supposed to play this solo. It's really weird when you're playing it solo. It basically just comes down to spamming everything. But this is also problematic because like I like I siege multiple bases. Like I completely cleared out one of the the hordes because there's three different hordes you have to clear. Uh, and I was halfway through the second one before I finally just decided I couldn't play this game anymore, even solo, where you would you would spawn in a, an army, you'd rush the enemy base, and while you're approaching the enemy base, I would just constantly spam building towers and archer towers. Yeah. And so eventually it gets to a point where you're building your base inside the enemy base, and you're just defended by these archer towers. And it's like, oh, I would send all my units to attack. They would go in there, they would fight. And once I saw like they were starting to die, I would just be like, well, time to retreat. I would leave my guys fighting go back, spawn a whole nother army and just repeat that. And that was how I cleared every base. There was no tactics needed. It was just whittle them down with suicide runs. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's really strange too, because whenever we would play together, it was more like I would, I would be stuck in the base and you would just go farm resources. And then I, cause I was almost always the one controlling. This is a very strange thing. I guess this is another mechanic is that, you do have units that you control. It's very loose control. So you can either make all the units nearby you rally and follow you, RuneScape style, or you can make them go to a designated location that's in the center of your camera. Not where your character's looking, but where your camera is looking. And 
it makes all your characters attack move if we're going to keep using Age of Empires terms, which means essentially that they're going to go to the spot that you told them to go. And if there are any enemies in between those two spots, they're going to fight them. And it's weird because specific units kind of treat that treat that command a little differently. Like if you have archer units, they're more likely to attack something in between you and that point than the yeah. melee golem units, where the melee golem units will go to that point and then kind of fan out. Like they're, yes. they're they're like okay, I'm here. What's around me? And then they'll fan out and start fighting, it's which so is something I started to learn. We we thought about that at the beginning of this game, where we neither of us understood like what exactly was going on. It does behave differently for different units because if you have the ranged ones, they they do stop and shoot the second they see a target. But the the golems, the uh, the the metal ones, they're not metal ones, the stone ones. These became my suicide guys because if the they will go to the point, then look for a target. And so if you mark something, like if you're like, hey, go over there and destroy that spawner, even if there's six dudes in between them and the spawner, they will run past the dudes, go to the point, then attack the spawner because it's closer. I had an, an issue where I was trying to get them to a destroy gate, and I'm like, all right, melee guys, go attack the gate. And I was right next to the gate. I was rubbing my face on it, but I placed the point on the other side of the gate. So they yeah. try, they were just trying to pass to the point they would not attack the gate. and that's It was happening was, for me as well. That's why I, I like, thought what that... What is happening? It's such a weird, I don't know, like, order of operations problem. Yeah, so you either need to put the point just before the gate, or you need to just make them rally around you and then just stand next to the gate, doing facing. nothing. you can't because, move. If you move, they stop attacking. Yeah, and, so, and also you can't hurt the gate. There are many things you can't physically hurt as a person. You need units to fight. And I wonder if this was a balancing issue that they had to fix whenever they were doing testing with this. Like, I wonder how broken it was that you were able to hurt everything. Because there are enemy units that you can't hurt. And yeah, it is like, very strange. It's so strange. But they can still hurt you, of course. Uh, let's see. Other mechanics. Uh, you are responsible for be- gathering your own resources unless you have villages that are friendly to you. Then they will just give you an insane amount of resources. The villages give you so much stuff. But the problem is if they get taken over, the stuff gets raided, then you don't have any stuff for them to give you. And you have to walk around the field to collect your own stuff. And Nave, the difficulty affects how much resource you get per resource node too really yeah so like whenever we were playing together on legendary difficulty we find like a redstone thing and i'm like sweet there's 20 redstone if i just find five more of these i can build one cannon whereas in when i was playing on normal difficulty i found one of the redstone things i'm like sweet 50 redstone i just need one (laughs) more and i can build a whole cannon oh my god and then i would i would i was able to set up like multiple cannons by the end of it like man this completely that makes me a little different. agitated. So, yeah, Cause sometimes like, you can't fucking find one. Like sometimes you'll find one and then it's like impressive how hidden they are suddenly. Cause you can, you can totally see where there is redstone and where there's diamond and coal. It's literally the same texture it, that is on any biome. Like it's the same texture. And then just it, the only thing is that the color, color yeah, yeah, is different. So it's so noticeable. So it's not like usually hard, but sometimes you just can't. Like Phil was like, "Nave, I need redstone. I'm having trouble here," and I'm like, "I have no. I've been running around. I really don't know where it's at." Uh, the other thing, let's see. So you need the resources to build your buildings and also to build your troops. But some of the resources you can only get from villages, such as like the uh, lapis, you can only get that from villages or killing enemy units. Will sometimes drop them. And this became very difficult for us whenever all our villages got taken over. Yeah, because on the hardest difficulty, I assume that those uh, village raids are a lot more frequent, right? And yes, deadly. they are way more frequent, and they weren't having two at a time. Follow up, all the raids are like time based, and it's so weird because like there's a limit on how many structures you can build. And there was a point where even when I was playing on my own. I hit the limit of how many structures I can build. I'm like, what? There's a limit? Yeah. And then I get raided, and they still instantly just shred through everything, like paper, even on normal difficulty. And I'm like, I don't... What is the balance in this? It doesn't make sense how they're able to... Did you ever manage to make it stone walls and stuff like that? Did we ever do that? It seems to really not matter. Or what really pissed me off is like, I also had like a place super kitted out. I was attacking the thing, and I'm like right at finished. It's at like 10%. I'm about to shut down a portal and basically wipe a whole section of the map off. I'm like, this is great. 
I'm like, oh, this village is being under attack. I'm like, they can wait 10%. I wait 10%. I teleport there as I land since I was late, even though in the loading screen it's like, you should set up some defenses while you're gone in case you can't make it in time to defend your village. And I'm like, dude, that place is like the Great Wall of China. It has literally like I made, instead of having just walls, I just surrounded everything in archer towers in like three concentric circles of just archer towers that can just automatically machine gun anything that comes near. I'm like, that, that place is fine. I teleport in instantly every single building all shatters a one giant frame breaking animation as i go to three frames and everything disintegrates and then it cuts straight to the cutscene of like oh the squidwards are sad because the village failed and was taken over and i'm like what it was 10 <laughs> seconds i was not here and because of that i have to rebuild all those resources were lost all the time i spent building up that place was lost if i would have known it was going to do that i would have just teleported there 10 seconds sooner Maybe so yeah. annoyed. Like, what? What's the point? And Phillip- the best part is, all the all the pigs were instantly dead when I arrived too. And they went from like sixty pigs instantly to zero. So they something killed them. And also, all the towers instantly died at the same time. So everything, just the wrath of God, nuked this whole village. And then they instantly cut to thanks for saving us from the pigs, but everything was destroyed. And I'm like, destroyed by what? Like, no, there's nothing here now. God. Yeah, Phil so definitely bad. felt the resource loss more than I did because he was so much more involved in the building and stuff like that. Because the only things I really built were the upgrades. Like, there are upgrades that you can put around, like, your little central hub area that, like, increase your troop limit and, and all kinds of stuff. That's also how you, like, learn how to mine coal and shit like that. And that's a, I, I was prioritizing doing those while Philip was, like, prioritizing actually playing the fucking video game. And... Uh, and other stuff like that. There's another thing that you get where uh, there are there are units around the map. The maps are procedurally generated, by the way, which yeah. I think is really interesting. Really cool. Um, it is cool the, until you get to the bases, and then you realize they have not been like they are generated so that they are just like impossible to navigate. Yeah, the bases are the ba- the bases suck, especially the ones that are like on like on the plateau progressively higher little islands yeah Yeah. and it's it's a little bit like how did this even form like how did they get the how did they get this material up here like you know it like ah it's terrible and so you uh there are different little units there's four of them around the map called the first that you could spend gold and a different resource for each one and each of them are super units that follow you around if they die they respawn whenever you go back to a village or the central hub and then uh, those units are kind of invaluable because yes, they are insanely good. They're, they're the best great units in the game. You don't have to spend anything. They're like hero units and you don't have to spend any resources to get them. It's just as soon as they die, you teleport back and you bring it back. And either of us could have used it and, and, and commanded them. Um, those guys are really cool. And I would recommend anyone playing on any difficulty higher than normal to prioritize going to get those because they each cost a hundred gold each. And you only get gold from chests or from uh, little ore deposits that are in bases or outposts. Yeah. And uh, so farm that gold, get those four guys, and then start really pounding out stuff. But, like, you can't take too long because all of the pigs start upgrading their bases and they start getting more outposts. And it just gets it gets out of hand. So you got to continue to fight. But whenever you get 100 gold, you got to go and grab those first guys because they're insane. They're great. I think we can get right onto like kind of the biggest crux of this game that isn't really like it's not out front and center, but you you come to realize it very soon that you are always on the clock. There is no pause for this game, even if even if you like go back to dashboard or try to quick resume or save and quit. Like saving quits like the only way because this game is for one, it's server side hosted. I noticed because I would lag in my single player game, and I'm like, what is happening? Turns out you oh. are on it, like you were playing on a server side, always joinable. There's no private game, from what I can tell, or private offline game. This does seem like it would. This is definitely aimed at co-op. Yes, it, more than just so. a single player. This game would be so much easier if we had two more players. Like if we yeah. just have one person building bases, one person uh, 
leading armies and then have literally like two people sprinting across the world to collect resources or just be in places to defend them this game would be so easy but two players on the hardest difficulty was just impossible but this is also another thing is that like there is a spawn limit in in units and yes. it is not unique to each player it is it is worldwide so at first you can only have like 15 units and that's spread out between me and philip which is when philip quickly was like okay nave i surrender you can have the units and then he's just stopped building units ever, ever again and because if i built 15 units on the other side of the board on the other side of the map to take an outpost and philip was in the middle of trying to siege a, a base he couldn't build any more units because i had all the units now right yeah. and so i don't know that's a very strange thing i don't know if that's like to limit cpu usage or whatever but but it's also something that they have for upgrades too cuz by the end of the game we were able to hold like 45 units each we couldn't even command 45 units like I individually know, that's just such a weird thing like the individual command limit it seems to be the only balancer for that like you know. can upgrade that by the way you can like you need to upgrade them both because there's also like you can get units that are different from your summonable units including yeah. the wildlife such as the wolves, awesome. the pigs. You can llama. grab those. The llama. Llamas are ranged that. units. Really? It's awesome. It's yeah. yeah. I didn't grab great. them until my single player game when I'm like, oh, there's a pig. And I whistled at him and he was like, let's fuck someone up. As he like cocks a gun and starts yeah. following me. Dude, actually. it's great because it's like you. there are roaming gangs of fucking wolves. You know what I mean? That you can go grab or creepers and stuff like that. So every time I'm always like collecting them before I get to the base. Yeah. But as I was saying, like you're always on the clock. All these actions we're taking are eating into time, and the time is always ticking by. And every night something bad happens. Every night, either a piglin base will get upgraded and go up a star, rebuild. Like if you had done any damage to it at that point, it gets completely healed and just gets improved. So much so, we had a base that I had almost taken out. Nighttime happened, and since it was one of the ones listed as going to be upgraded soon, I was like, "Oh, we need to take this one out." While I was there fighting it, it upgraded and got all its health back, undid all the damage I did, destroyed all my buildings I had constructed nearby, and just said, start again. Yeah, and that was pretty close to the the time the point that we both quit. Because another thing that happened to me was Philip has just gotten a new internet service provider and all of that jazz. This is probably why we were having trouble at the beginning of this episode. And... Uh, I, I would lag out of his game. I would be like a hundred percent of the way through completing like a village, like retaking a village. And I would be in the middle of building a carpentry house, which is how you completely retake the village. And I lagged out and I came back. I had to run. I spawned in the center, had to run all the way back across the map to that, to that village, just to find out that it reset all of my progress. Even though Philip was still in the fucking game. Yeah. He never left. I was the one that lagged out, and then the game just reset that village progress for me. So I had to retake it, and then I died. And then I went back, and I had to retake it again. And I, I was like, I can't. I can't keep doing this. I was just so fucking angry at the game. Because whenever you get to that end game, there are some enemies that will almost one-shot you. Like, yeah. they will hit you, and you're almost dead. And if you take one straight arrow, you're dead. And then you have There's to restart so the whole fucking thing. projectiles, and they like yep. hone in on you. They are very well targeted projectiles. Like you can try to like juke them, but they are just raining them out because like every it seems every piglin has some ranged attack they can use. So once again with the village thing, I remember at one point I went to defend a village that was under attack, and I'm like, oh, Nate, I'll just pop over here real quick and defend them. I, and you are on a timer. Then you have to basically wait till sunrise for the the and defend the village all night and while i was there i built up a whole bunch of stuff had towers had troops walking around like this is easy i'm just chilling having a good time I'm actually kind of enjoying the game and then i died and i'm like oh no worries i'll respawn and come right back because i died and i was the only one in the village counted as an instant fail and the whole village just got nuked off the map and it was like oh no we're completely destroyed it needs to be recovered now and i'm like wait i was winning like there was i had a fortress constructed the piglins weren't even in the village they were outside it and somehow we still it still got destroyed just because i died there it's very disappointing yeah there it definitely relies it relies too heavily on the player and there's no autonomy other than you 
which yeah. is depressing. And that's not what you want to see in your like pseudo real time strategy, like strategy games. You know what I mean? You don't want to see zero autonomy from the game itself. You want to be able to like start constructing things and then forget it. And yeah. this map is too large to have to deal with. It. You know what it reminds me of? In Fallout 4, the Preston Garvey situation where he's like, hey, another settlement is under attack all the time. And everyone hated it because the settlements had no agency. You know what I mean? Like, you, there's no way to, like, help the, make the settlement not be under attack and like, and, like, be able to forget it. Like, you always, it had to be you to go and fucking do it, right? Yeah. And you got your own fucking quest. Pretty much. Uh, which with you always being on the clock, the game gets progressively harder because every night it's not always just like one thing will happen. It'll be like this piglin base goes up a difficulty star, but also they'll build a new outpost. So there's going to be something else in the overworld that you either need to destroy or run past. And you think like, Oh, I can clear an outpost and get free XP or whatever and level up my, like I can progress with my skill tree unlocks and now I can control more units or stuff like that. Oftentimes it is not, that helpful like the upgrades are great you know it's cool it's like carry more resources great it never seemed balanced enough to make it worth the time investment because then you're spending a whole night clearing an outpost recovering a village attacking a settlement like a, a pig settlement and by then they've already rebuilt something else and your other stuff still needs to be defended at the same time so it seems so unbalanced it's so weird because like we look at other time-based games like Dead Rising 1, for example, if we're going to talk about what we talked about earlier. That game yeah. is severely time-based. In the beginning, you're like, this game is unbeatable. I can't beat it in this time. But then you realize you probably can't on your first playthrough. But you carry over a new game plus, pretty much, or your character levels. And now you level up your character. You, you're literally moving faster. Or you have more health or you do more damage. Or your knowledge of the mall gets better. Whereas this is like the map is procedurally generated, but your knowledge really doesn't help you anything because everything is remade each, each night. Every time the piglin village levels up, it's got a new construction and it's not even like you can siege for a long time because that's what it usually turned into where I spent like, it seemed like multiple two in-game days sieging a piglin tower just for it to upgrade on me. And I'm like, well, all that work's undone. All those resources gone. Or during that whole time, they took over two of our villages. So now we also have less resources and we need to spend the time to go back and recover those villages. It just never seemed balanced in any of the progress we were making. Even yeah, though there was one time a- that where we, we, uh, cause there's three different little faction, big factions. And we took two of their three places. And then the amount of time it took for us to take the third one, which was the hardest one to take, they made two more. Yeah. And then we took one of them, which was an easy base, and the second one upgraded into a medium in the time it took us to beat the hard base and then go and take an easy base. And by the way, the it's whole like, time we're oh fighting my God. this one, the other two pig factions are just leveling up their, their current bases and developing new outposts and attacking our villages. And I'm like... It is, this is physically impossible with two people. I don't even think it would be possible with four people, honestly. With how limited our levels were, how limited we were on building structures, it just seemed resources too, because there's so many capped resources. It's not like you can just go like, oh, I'm going to go get an insane amount of like iron and wood and stone, and I can just build a massive army to take over these guys. No, the second you get in there, like, yeah, you, you got what you got. If you need to leave, well, sucks. They're going to rebuild while you're gone. Oh God! Why? Yeah, it is so tough. tiring. There's so it's 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 there's they had an interesting like buffet of things that they wanted to do, and it's almost like you know you become like a like a proficient at many things, master of none. What is it? What is that saying? No, it's it. Something like that. Whatever. Jack but it's of not all even trades, really proficient. Master of none. Yeah, yeah. Jack of all trades. It's a. But it's you're not a jack of all trades though. You're just kind of mediocre at everything. Yeah, they and, just threw so much stuff in this game. I don't know. It's like if they would have focused on real time strategy, it probably would have been better. Or if they would have focused on like this total war kind of thing, probably would have been better. But they got so many different things. And to the point where the game is so complex, the game is obviously aimed at children a little bit. Is because it? the story of the game Oh yeah. Well that's what I'm saying. The story of the game is is children. It is Pixar, right? Yeah. But the game is so complex that it, it begs an adult to play it. So you know what I think about when I play this game? It's like, this game is made to... It's it's similar to Child of Light, you know? 
where it's like you're you have to have an adult playing and then or like you know resident evil revelations right you have an adult playing the main role and then like you have a kid kind of doing their own thing and the adult is just playing a game on their own right because in child of light it's a jrpg but you it's co-op in a way that you can have some a second player be this little orb that helps you fight but they don't do anything really and then you have uh resident evil revelations where you have like a girl the secondary co-op player is like a little girl with a flashlight yeah a flashlight but holder. they don't really do anything other than that so it's like those are that's a really interesting like thought but it's like this this game is like almost like a real time strategy but you have a kid that's always nagging that wants to play with you right i don't know this game's not local co-op though it's only online co-op like is it not local co-op not from what i could tell i don't think there was any option for local co-op, co-op. oh wow so I, this- I guess i just assumed since it was minecraft it was local is dungeons local co-op yes dungeons is local co-op cuz wow. i play with my daughter yeah, so you'd have to have... Oh, yeah. Okay, well, oh, weird. man. So this game, it doesn't feel like children could play it because children like to make their own games up, even in actual video games. Like, we would goof off in Halo campaign, like, when we were growing up or whatever. Like, instead of clearing the level, we would just explore and look around and jump on the terrain and stuff. Like, kids are going to want to be able to explore this beautiful, serene world or whatever, but... I feel like they can't even enjoy that because as they are exploring it, the piglins are slowly turning it into hell while they're just walking around looking at the wolves and stuff and climbing the yeah. mountains and actually enjoying the game. The game's getting worse. Every village that they're going to come through has been plundered. It looks like that scene in Mulan where she stops and picks up the doll <laughs> and they're like, huh? Yeah. I wonder if this doll had an owner before. Hmm. A girl we're fighting for. Yep. Yeah. This game... Uh, Let's talk about some of the the more, uh, I don't know, mechanics. The pathing is terrible for everyone. Like, yes, we spend so much time sprinting across this map. It's just so obnoxious because there is thorns that will grab you and slow you down. There are pig hell vines, which don't hurt you, but just slow you down. There is swampy mushroom slime vines that poison you and slow you down. Yeah the water uh, slows you down the water slows you down uh there's mountains not that bad but you have to path around them or climb them yeah which by the way again similar to how the first there's four firsts around there are also different mounts you start them out with a horse which is just kind of like the medium fast kind of thing there is a beetle that is slow it's slower than the horse but it climbs all terrain so good that thing is a life it is a lifesaver because even when you're in like uh, like enemy outposts or whatever, you could just climb the wall and just get in and just kind of explore the place. It's so fucking helpful. Yeah. So while you're passing through this hell, at the same time, you have all these units that basically right click followed you and they are just eating everything you're running through. They you, you jump over a thing of lava. They're not going to jump over that lava. They're just going to run yeah. right through it, and catch on fire. You finally get over to like a piglin fortress and you're like oh crap it's the one that's like on all these floating platforms well good luck by the time you get to the top of it you've already lost half your troops just falling off the side of these plateaus oh you know what we haven't mentioned there's building mechanics besides like the actual physical buildings you can build like stairs and bridges and stuff which is like the primary fucking thing that you have to build in this game lots of ramps because it's everything's procedurally generated and hell to travel on it was weird because at first I fucking hated it, but I kind of just got used to it, you know, yeah. like the way that the bridges are built. And then as I got used to it, I kind of kind of coped, I guess I was coping, oh, God. but it was like, I don't know how else they would do this because you, it, you it, it, the game is moving so fast that there's no time to physically build the bridge like in Minecraft, you know what I mean? Unless yeah. you're like a fucking Fortnite player, you know, when you get shot once and you build a three story skyscraper instantly yeah. like you can't really have like you can't really do that and they and in, in fact the controls don't really give you that ability either so essentially what you do is you put a point for the beginning of the bridge or the staircase or whatever and then you put an end point and the game tries to guess what elevation you want it at and it's at for the most part not terrible at it you know what i mean i don't know i had a couple ones that are like a foot off the ground whenever they get done being built and i'm like that's yeah. fine they i can path up that they do little yeah hops. it'll be one of those uh path and point of no returns in uh in sony games you know yeah. what i mean where you drop oh, down a high five drop. Foot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't go back. I'm Kratos and I can't lift this tree, even though I can fucking pick up and throw into space this giant. I yeah, can't lift this tree. So, yeah, the, the navigating is terrible for the AI. But I actually had this help me in my single player game where I would be able to set up a fortress on the other side of like a little river of lava and the piglins won't go into the lava. So I constructed like a bunch of like bridges or like that, like zigzag back and forth in the piglins, like little NPCs and zoo tycoon just walk slowly back and forth across the bridges. And I'm like, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. They just keep doing that. Or yeah. uh, talk about other building mechanics. I found that the wall thing does work, Nave, because I specifically highlighted in uh, Battle for Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, when you're fighting against the AI, they will path around in a wall before they will destroy it. So it was always better to build a big wall and then leave like an end cap off, but then zigzag back the other way with the wall so that the AI will be in like a Disneyland style uh, line for, you know, Big Fudge Mountain or whatever, <laughs> as they're like zigzagging back and forth just to get to your base. And that's more efficient than just building a single wall where they will destroy one tiny section of the wall and just walk through. So in this game, it's like it turns out they will not path around they will start to fight some of the walls but if you place a single wall segment not even a continuous wall like i would just like drop like 15 of them just down just right in front of an archer tower and some of them will like kind of walk in like weird circles around their pathing makes them like try to thread the needle a couple times just to go around these wall segments and so they're just getting eaten up by arrows at the same time, some of them will stop, like the ranged units, will, like their whole purpose is usually just to destroy structures. They will stop and take out every single single wall fragment along the way instead yeah, of they are also hitting the towers. Moving. Yeah. I don't know, it's, and it's like, is this an actual mechanic? Like, this is something children should be practicing in the game? Because if you just build a wall lot across the ai will take that as we're going to smash through the wall and continue on yeah but if it's just the wall post they will stop and fight the wall post that's super weird i mean maybe that was something that they deliberately put in there because it sounds stupid and terrible but it also is like what would a kid do i don't know you know like do you think a kid can understand like hit the wall put it down and move it so that the wall is like more like age of empire style it's like do you think I don't know. Or because I'm points. thinking back, like when I played Age of Empires, I had most of the stuff explained to me by an older person. You know? So I know as a kid I could build walls that kinda, you know, but like I I didn't figure it out. Like someone told me, click that, put it there, now drag it and let go there. You know what I mean? And I was like, uh, Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, you know, I get it. And he's like, look, now they can't go through. I'm like, oh, all right. I Another guess. weird mechanic is you send out your little collectors to collect resources, your little miners, and they will get attacked by enemies. And so when, when you're raiding a base, though, like you can send them out to clear up the pig poop and they will clear the pig poop. But we had like seven of these guys. So whenever I was sieging a base and there was a bunch of enemies attacking, I would throw out all seven of my miners uh, to go pick up pig poop. And while they were doing that, the pigs would stop attacking my structures and the units, and they would focus on killing my miners. And so there's no cooldown to spawning the miners. So I was always spamming them. So it was like I'd run into the base, building towers, throwing down miners, while also commanding my golems to go attack things, and just repeatedly doing this until I started taking too much damage and I have to get out of there or all my troops finally die. But these mid-max strategies that I was doing still took me like 20 minutes to kill one base and i had like Which no is, enjoyment during it at all you know and the whole time i'm like i guess this is what i'm doing this is what i have to do to win yeah you're cheesing it is it cheese i mean it's probably cheesing because you didn't feel good doing it i guess know? but it's also like it's weird because i was i don't know if this is a glitch or something but i was never able to clear the red stuff because philip explained to me multiple times he's like you got to equip it and i'm like it's not there and like there is an upgrade that you do that lets you uh, gives you the ability to use that ability use clear the red stuff. But like I every time I would disassemble it and then rebuild it, and I still didn't have it. And so That's I was so like, weird. I don't know if this is a host thing. Could be only that would be weird. Like You're, why no, is this it game only has host? some bugs? 
Like it just released, yeah. and there's I think it was a bug. prolific, prolific bugs. One uh, being the hot bar bug, which uh, we didn't even get into like the UI for this game. God awful! You have a hot bar that you can only limit, limited like customize or whatever, because like you yeah. have a hot bar for your unit spawners. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You have a hot bar for your constructions, but you only have seven boxes for your constructions. Meanwhile, I'm like if I'm sieging a base, I actually need more than this then for like a normal base setup siege and then it's like on your left you have a bar what was the left bar i think that was for upgrades oh yeah your upgrade like you have an upgrade one and like well you only use this back in the main base in the center of the map you're never going to use this hot bar at any other time why is it a hot bar yeah and and the funny thing is is that i would always look at what the upgrades did before so i would already be in the menu and then I would leave the menu, then go to the heart bar and put it down. And it's like, it would have been better if I just selected this from the menu and then it took me back to the yeah. building screen. In that's just it is in the menu. There's an X button that says quick build and you can press X on it. Does nothing. Doesn't do anything. I don't know what it does. I could not that's get strange. it to work. I never uh, pressed that. I didn't even know it was there. Another, the bottom one is for getting resources. Oh yeah. The resource one. Yeah. That makes sense to have that one on its own. Ah, God. But then it got to a point where we had a thing that was like uh, farm all resources in in a zone. Yeah, and, and then so, you didn't need the bar anymore. Yeah, then you like basically it came down to I would want the farm all resources, probably the stone one because we were always out of stone because those are like the best units in the game and everything uses stone. And then like the clear pig poop one. I don't I don't remember what the pig poop one is called, but it clear up the red crap that the pigs leave behind. Those were the only three I could need. So if I could put more structures on the resource gathering bar so that I could, I don't know, better manage my crap while I'm mid battle, I wish, I wish it would offer that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see other weird stuff. Yeah. When we were playing on legendary guilty, it got to a point where the game just became a lost cause. We, we didn't have enough resources. We had no villagers. We had no, resources from the villages to make more troops to retake the other villages even though when we did retake him the next night a god would come down from heaven and basically smite it and just take it back over instantly and it just felt like we couldn't do anything in the game even though we had so yeah. many upgrades we had every like auxiliary upgrade that nave could get for us we had we had all yeah, we got the achievement for that we had all the first we had all the mounts we had basically every battle tower type bonus and it still wasn't enough which was pretty disheartening i never really messed with the towers did you build you built those though right you built the big towers that you can get yeah they do really good but it also doesn't seem to matter in the long run like uh the, they're like bell towers and when they ring they just stun everything for like two seconds and then they go on cooldown for like 15 seconds and then they ring the bell again which like that's great that slows everything down but like you don't do damage to the enemies and your units kind of suck too as they're fighting the enemies and not to mention the enemies are spread so far around that it's like it's not efficient nothing you do is like efficient or like this is not starcraft where you can control like multiple groups really quick because you have to physically run around the the base that's being sieged on four different sides at the same time it sucks that's also like it's so strange that your main character that you're controlling doesn't ever get upgraded in any yeah, way. He's always no just help. sucks. No, like I was really expecting a speed upgrade or anything because we are traveling on this map all the time and it just takes forever. I'm like, great. Another three minutes of walking through the woods. Maybe I'll see redstone along the way. Oh no, this is the woods biome. There is no redstone in the woods biome. And that was like the only resource I need. No, I'll wait for you to get back. Nave had to go pee pee. That's fine. I'll just eat these crackers. You know, it's like uh, before the pod started, I was like, oh man, Nave's going to be on in an hour. Well, I thought he was going to be on an hour because he didn't message me specifically saying that we were meeting at one. I just assumed we were going to meet at one. And so I was like, oh, I'll just take a nap with Arthur. So I laid there for like half an hour with Arthur trying to sleep. Could not go to sleep. Like, fine, I'll just get up. And then I go and I get all my stuff set up. And I'm like, great, this should be good to go. Then we have technical issues for, like, I don't know, like 30 minutes before we finally start recording. And I never got to eat lunch. So, you know, 
I was like, oh man, I'll eat lunch around, uh, I don't know, noonish or whatever. But I got these crackers. These, uh, specifically Keebler uh, cheese and peanut butter. A little snack report in the middle of the pod. You know, no, really no, good. I have to defend myself now. <laughs> no, I... Because Philip, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So we definitely had a miscommunication here. <laughs> so Philip, you know, yesterday he messaged me. Or I, so he messaged me yesterday. This is my fault, actually. So he messaged me yesterday. He goes, when do we record tomorrow? I don't reply. I definitely saw this. I forgot to reply. But then you messaged me in the morning, which I did happen to wake up in the morning, like maybe like 10 minutes after you messaged me. So that was convenient. And you're like, when are you recording? And I was like, when do you feel? You know, and I was like, you know, the concert I'm going, like, the concert I'm going to is today. So I don't want to start past three o'clock. And Phil goes, what? 1 p.m. question mark. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. I don't say this, but I'm like, yeah, OK, 1 p.m., whatever, because I said, when do you feel? And you said 1 p.m. And I was like, yep, great. And then so I just went back to sleep <laughs> like I never replied. And now I got question mark, question mark, question mark. I am assuming one question mark. <laughs> and this is like over the course of like five hours <laughs> of trying to get a hold of me. And meanwhile, in my head, I'm just like enjoying my day. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm going to record at 1 p.m. And Philip is like, not sure. <laughs> in the not sure camp. And I'm like, I just assume he's going to be there at some point. Yeah, and then I showed up right on time. Yeah, lucky, lucky you. It's so much so that I found a meme. Oh. I was like, why did you... He put a fucking... He's like, so much so that I found a meme and then put a cracker in his mouth. I'm like, are you joking? <laughs> You're in the middle of a sentence. Why did you do that? Uh, I see the meme now, though. Like, I was just like, this is going to be like me. I put it in the play long meme chat, of course. It says me. It's John Cena looking weird, and he says me. Me at my desk, waiting for my friend who said he'll be on in five minutes, one hour ago. I showed up. Yeah, you showed up. You were you were right on time. It's just uh, yeah. In like fact, it was. Ago. I sent you the Zencaster link one minute before I was supposed to be here. I was it early. Or, yeah, early. Whatever. And we're back again. Minecraft. Um. Yeah. Do you have any more I don't remember points? what you were saying when I walked away. I thought so. I wrote in the chat "PP" and I walked away, and Philip just stopped talking immediately, like <laughs> mid sentence. I was like, "Oh, I thought he was just gonna keep explaining himself." That's why I didn't say anything. Well, I was just bitching about all this little stuff. I don't think there's anything else really to complain about, except I don't know, man. The animations are okay. I really not into the voice acting though. The game is pretty. Oh yeah, beautiful game. Game looks really good, especially when you go out to the water area, like to the outskirts of the island, because you're always on an island, I assume. But like the the sun reflecting off of the island are different. Like the ray tracing, man, the ray tracing looks good. Game does definitely look better than I expected it to look. Other than that, it's like this is a weird. This is this game is just like a weird like cross between. Dungeon Defenders and Over Overlord and Pikmin and like like it like I don't know it's like there's so many games I've realized that kind of do this thing and so that's probably one thing that makes me more sad is that more disappointed in the game is that like there are other games that I kind of enjoy more than this that do a similar thing just kind of better even like Orcs Must Die where you're just setting up traps yeah like I don't know. I miss Orcs Must Die and Dungeon Defenders. The new Dungeon Defender sucks balls. Do you want to play it? Yeah, we can. I think it's free. All right. Which uh, makes it suck worse. I got a couple Steam reviews because there's not much on the Reddits about this one, but there's a lot of Steam reviews for a game that just came out uh, 12 hours, or not 12 hours, 12 days ago, which I'd see you put the Metacritic score in there. This game is doing quite well. 71 for Metacritic and 70 for user. Surprising. Yeah, middling. It's very surprising when the user score and the Metacritic are very close together. But I think it's also the I think the user score, there's not that many there. All right, so I'll take these first like kind of Steam review. We don't have to read them all, but I just found uh, a couple ones that I wanted to highlight. Uh, this one all. is from uh, Ghost Faced But Uglier, who has four hours on record. He gave it a not recommend, and he says, Why did I play for more than two hours for fuck's sake? Because you can't return a Steam game after two hours. Yep, and he played it for two more hours. Didn't yeah, come he played back it for four it. hours. Uh, so one? we got Jesus, Jesus, 
with 1.4, which is weird because Jesus, Ghostface, but uglier, 4.1 hours, 1.4 hours. Got a kind of yin and yang going on here at the top. But this is not a recommend to complete the yin and yang. It's also a not recommend. This one says simple, small game, and a story mode that can be finished in like two and a half hours, two to five hours, sorry, uh, including some multiplayer issues that cause my friend to disconnect every time. I'm with you, brother. And then he says, for this price range, this game is not worth it and suggests waiting for a sale. So this guy thinks even at 40 bucks, this game isn't worth it. I would probably say the same. I call this a tin bucker, a tenner. Tenner? I would say 30 bucks is fine, honestly. But, I mean, I, I I clearly spend a lot of money on video games, so I don't really know. But 30 bucks seems, like, okay. Like, I would... I paid... I obviously played it on Game Pass. All these people on Steam paid money for this. Which, so. a lot of these profile pictures are pretty on point. Like, we never talk about those, but it's, like, Ghostface but uglier literally is Ghostface. Jesus has, like, a really oddly good cartoon Jesus. Yeah, like, and, with those cartoon, like straight to VHS movie yeah, TV totally shows. Like, it's really faded, where it's like it's not backlit very well or something like that. Uh, this next one, Game Glitches, who has a picture of Stalin, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Stalin. Yeah, as a not recommend, with 63 hours on record. And he says, playing it just to get my money's worth, total shit, was made like Overlord without any of the fun aspects. Whoever made this should be hanged by their balls. FYI, I left my PC running for three days when I went on a trip and the game was still running. Ignore my time played, please. He had 63 hours on record. Three three days is 72 hours. Yeah, I don't know if the math is adding up. Maybe his computer yeah, went to sleep or okay. it logged him out or something finally. This guy's a closet Minecraft Legends enjoyer. We also got Live, Laugh, Love. <laughs> who has two, <laughs> who has two hours red coat voice actor detected refunded immediately america first god bless our country never forget 1776 <laughs> i didn't read that before i read it all the um the main characters that talk to you are these um three overworld god spirits and one of them is British. <laughs> he played literally just enough time to not be able to refund it, too. Poor guy. Yeah, he played exactly two hours. Did you and... check this guy's other reviews? Because he's got no, five. You wonder, no, I, I wonder if he only reviews British voice acting yeah, like games. This is his, oh, his only review. Which, did you see his picture? Is that like a duck shaped like a dick wearing a uh, a patriotic hat? Or like Dude, a... it, it's like a Samuel Adams hat. Yeah. and uh, I don't know what's going it on. It looks like somebody's only sniffing a flower at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I see it now. Okay. No, that's a duck dressed in... Um, he looks like a patriot from 1776. <laughs> and he's sniffing a flower. Now that I've enhanced yeah. it. God. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. I have not enhanced it. All right. So next one, uh, Clapton Cheeks. Is it, yeah, he recommended this game. He said, Whoa. I know he has 12 hours, uh, 12 hours in the game, but at four hours, he wrote his review and he said, this game kind of slaps when I want to turn my brain off and watch silly little guys smack about other silly little guys. Yeah. The pigs are really silly. And so are the little, little, uh, little Goombas that you summon. Yeah. I think the animations are good. I think the game looks good. Yeah. The, the character models are really good too. I love the designs of the pigs. Yeah. And like, also, I'm, like, all of the little dudes that run around, like the llamas and the creepers and the skeleton mans, they all run around and they have life, you know? Yeah. Um, we also got Nerdgasm, one and a half hours, product refunded in bold letters, <laughs> which they're not allowed to write that. So Steam wrote that. It says, Alexa, set my tower, set my timer for one hour and 45 minutes. And it says 1.5 hours on record. Yeah, so he also <laughs> up this game and then wrote a review about it. Yeah, I agree with a lot of the statements said in these Steam reviews. You have anything before we take a break and go to our final words? Uh, let me see if there are any funny Metacritic reviews. I'm gonna have the uh, back to snack report and eating the crackers. Oh, look at this one, Mojang and Microsoft from T Baron seventy six. 
Mojang and Microsoft need to stop taking a creative type game and making it into a battle royale game. Is this a Is battle royale? First sentence? No. <laughs> so I don't know if I should keep reading. I just saw battle royale immediately. Yeah, these are all just people complaining. A lot of these are in Spanish. All right. Anyway, that wasn't productive. That guy thinks it's a battle royale game. So that's the state of Metacritic re- user reviews. Philip's eating a cracker. So I we am. can't go off break. <laughs> Oh, one point we didn't really hammer on too much is that there were other glitches that I encountered. Specifically, uh, twice happened for me, once for you, including whenever I was playing on my own, where you cannot open the map. No way to fix this besides leaving the game. Yeah, it's so weird. Another one that happened to me multiple times was the hot bars getting stuck. Which this one, I just didn't... So weird. It's like all of a sudden I'm stuck on the upgrades hot bar, which... Not beneficial unless you're in the upgrade zone. That's the only place you can use the upgrades hotbar. But I can't do anything else. I can't switch it. I can go into the pause menu. I can leave. It's still stuck. Eventually, it just fixed itself by its own accord. And I'm like, nah, that was a fun five minutes of not being able to do anything. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about this game is when you don't know where your units are, but you can't spawn any more units because, you know, they're there. They're alive. I found in single player, you can't actually do something. If you go to any spawner and hold down the B button for like 30 seconds, it will teleport all your units to you. That doesn't work in co-op? We never use it in co-op, so I assume that option's not there. Oh. Well, maybe it is there, and we just never got explained. Maybe. Which, when I was complaining about this game, Jana even said to me, he's like, maybe you're bad at it. Do you guys do the tutorial? And I'm like, the tutorial was two minutes long. And it was like, walk to the other side of the room, build a bridge, summon some units. Okay, good luck. Congratulations. Yeah. All with very nice voice acting over the top. So, tutorial, zero out of ten on tutorial. So, Phil, if I was driving my mail truck the other day. Yeah. And, um, you know, I zone out when I'm when I'm working, right? I hate I hate being there. I don't want to do it. I'm listening to a podcast. I don't give a fuck. And uh, on my right here, go, 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 go. <laughs> yes, there's a turkey next to me. I'm in the center of the city now. Like, you remember, there was a turkey saga yeah. where I was being abused by turkeys. I was being hunted, showdown. I was being hunted, showdown by a bunch of turkeys in this like, but that was a, that was way out in the boonies on the outskirts of Oklahoma City. I am literally in the center of the fucking city now. There's How a turkey there. just chilling. I don't know. It's a female turkey. Just one solo female turkey solo queuing in the middle of this fucking city. <laughs> yeah, he he dropped and hot. He dropped in Twisted Towers. I I really had a uh, existential crisis here, and there was a there were people driving past me, and nobody was acknowledging this turkey. No one, not a single person, was like, "What?" Like you know, what? As they were driving by, nobody. Hmm, maybe it's a. I was going a little already. crazy. Um, so I, I drove like, you know, a couple houses forward and there's a person mowing their lawn and I was like waving them down. I was like, do you see that Turkey? And (laughs) you know, (laughs) which is not what you want to hear from your mailman. You know what I mean? (laughs) Do you see that Turkey over there? And the, the guy looks and he's like, Oh my God, that's a Turkey. And like, he's like, you know, we have this fucking moment of like confusion. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, like, literally having a schizophrenic episode right now. Because, like, I was just... No one was acknowledging it. Now, the next day, it rained really bad here in Oklahoma City. And the next day, there were maybe... I saw maybe 78 rabbits. Different rabbits. At different parts of my route. All over the place. Just rabbits fucking everywhere. Like, to the point where... So, I was sitting... I, I, was, I drove up to a mailbox. I put the mail in. There was a rabbit like uh, in the middle of this yard and I was kind of looking at it and then a hawk came down and grabbed it. No way. No <laughs> shit. Dude, this hawk came down and grabbed it and flew to this light pole right next to me and then started eating it to death and like it was like <laughs> you know those trees that have the balls and like they the balls break and like the spores go everywhere? Oh, yeah, that yeah. was its fur. It's fur. I could uh, see it its fur. It yes, it was ripping it to pieces. There was fur just kind of floating down. The, uh, this hawk eating this fucking rabbit, but uh, I I kind of, I I think I've come to the conclusion right because I don't know the last time I've seen a hawk either. 
I've come to the conclusion that there is a uh, a domestic terrorist on my route somewhere. That's re- you know what I'm saying? Re- 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 releasing wild animals in the city. Where else would the turkey come from? I don't know. There was way too many rabbits, dude. I am not even. I no, I was, wish I was joking. No, dude. I wish I was joking when I say there was like seventy eight. I am in the city. Dude, it's like even when we were in McAllister, like there'd be like rabbits out in the front yard sometimes. But I am in the city, though. Like I am like twenty minutes away from woods hey, in any direction. Dirt animals can live there. Is there any? Like it's not concrete everywhere. It's pretty much. That's what I'm saying, though. Is that it's pretty much concrete everywhere. I'm like in the middle of a little suburban neighborhood, and like there's a turkey suddenly. I don't know. Like our. We don't have that much woods nearby, but while we're on bird chat, the other day when I was driving my daughter to uh, driving school or whatever, uh, we drove just down the street, and we live in on-base housing, just like basic suburban houses. And I look over, and there's a massive buzzard, or condor, or I don't, I don't know the the deviations in it. Or Vulture? Whatever. Vulture? Yeah, it was one of those three. Yes, and it was just, it was huge. It was bigger than Arthur. Just this giant, massive <laughs> bird. Just sitting oh, there's not the very s- big. I, you talking about just body mat, body weight, not the wings? I'm, yeah, I'm talking about just probably just core body, not the wings. Like, he was big and tall. And he was just okay. sitting there munching on something in the grass, like, f- two feet from the sidewalk. And I'm like, that is a monster of a bird. He's a big boy. And I'm like, you see that? My daughter's like, I don't give, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about birds. And I'm like, that's a crazy big bird. That bird would fucking kill you, dude. There's a there's a there's a, a cluster box that there's a bird nest in. The bird left. The bird abandoned it. But um, the bird would get pissed off every time I showed up. Like I would open the back and it, it would fly out the back. I'd be like ah, you know, dodge it, and then it would be pissed <laughs> off nearby, like be squawking at me. And I was afraid because bird claws hurt a little bit. I I had no idea what kind of bird it was. It's probably just a random fucking bird, but like. Some birds have really sharp claws. And if that bird was like, I'm going to go after this guy, like, I wonder if it could, like, cut my head open. You know what I mean? I Expose mean, my brain matter a oh, little no. bit. Uh, oh, you, which you're talking about hawks. Whenever I was shooting the other day, you have to go, like, out into, like, the boonies on base, where it's just, like, training areas. It's just, like, a bunch of fields and trees and stuff like that. Like and it's fucking on, Modern Warfare 1 tutorial? Yeah. Like, just like that. And so it's like, while I was going out there, while I was coming back, I saw a whole bunch of hawks or like eagles of something like that. They were big boys, like big chickens, just sitting on the side of the road. Saw about probably four different ones just on different parts of the road, just chilling. I'm like, man, what is it with these birds these days? They're all birds are dinosaurs. Like legitimately. Like I was watching that hawk eat that rabbit and I was like. Life is fleeting. You know, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I was just looking, dude. That ra- I was watching. I could see. I could see the rabbit stop moving. You know what I mean? I was like, oh my god, this thing is uh getting it. It's fucking murdering that thing. How about it? A lot of rabbits. This is a uh, what was it like a snake rabbit island situation? You know, like we get we got to have at least one predator <laughs> to pull the population. Yeah, I wonder what. I don't know what the fuck's. I don't even know what brought that up. I don't know. You ready for a break? Yeah. The music plays. Boom, 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 boom. I think it was the, uh, I think we were talking about the llamas and stuff like that. And uh, so it's in my head now. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, we got to start that animal based podcast. <laughs> <laughs> animal review. What is it? We just an- review animals? Or are we putting them against each other? No. Like death battle? I was thinking like we would just uh, review animals like, hey, man, uh, this episode's on alligators. Specifically American, but I guess we can do some croc talk on the side. And while we're discussing, I'd be like, yeah, you know, man, I've seen so many alligators. It looks like a big flat rug at the zoo where he's just really wide, you know, wide alligator. Did I show you that video of the alligator eating the other alligator's foot? I'm pretty sure I showed you that video. Oh, you did? I don't know. I I've, think I've, you might have. I've shared that video to people before, and I'm like, I can't not... I mean, anytime I think about alligators, I think about this video <laughs> because like, you know, one alligator sees the other one when they're getting fed and he, like reaches over, bites it, does, does a death roll, rips the other alligator's hand off and then he just looks at him like, really, bro? You really going to do yeah. that to me? There was this, there were, there was these guys in the Louisiana Bayou and he, uh, he reached his hand down because there's an alligator or something and the alligator bit his arm 
and then it was about to death roll and he just kind of pried its mouth open and just dropped it back down into the water and he just kept he was talking the whole time to the people on the boat like he never like he was like he's never like owie you know like i would be like oh no you know what i mean (laughs) But uh, he was just like, oh, you know how he's going to buy you today. Oh, he got me. And then he just, well, we don't get him on. They jump on that. And she dropped him out of the fucking water. I'm like, oh, my God. This guy's a fucking maniac. I saw a video the other day. In fact, it was today, I think, where they, they were sneaking up on an alligator. And they're like, yo, watch this. And he had like a blanket. And the alligator was just chilling on like some grass on the side of the river. And he took the blanket and he threw it on top of the alligator's head. The alligator does like a backflip like stands up on his legs and does like a little jig and then of course they dub music over it where it's like playing like mexican party music while the alligators <laughs> and i'm like god that's fantastic yeah we gotta find that one i'm i'm fucking so my friends are i'm gonna drive all of us to the fucking concert we're going to and i was like the show starts at six and then my friend Jesse goes, I thought it starts at six and then he sent me a screenshot <laughs> of the fucking ticket and I was like are you a fucking idiot? Like, what part of what I said? I said, I said four words. What? Where did you get lost in that sentence to the point where you thought I didn't say what you just said to me? It sounds like he's trolling but, 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 you. But he sent me a screenshot. Do you think that, it, that, do you think that they, oh my God, man. I'm going to start not trusting anyone that I'm near. Because like, do you think that these people just know me well enough that they know that that's going to make me mad? I don't know, because uh, earlier, whenever it was, uh, you know, 1245, we were supposed to meet at one. You sent me the link at 1259. In a minute later, I replied, now, question mark? As in, like, <laughs> like you're, there could be another time it. you were referring to. <laughs> I just ignored it. I didn't even, I don't know what the fuck's going on, dude. Whatever. And we're back. Minecraft Legends. Dear listeners at home, uh, the thing is, I don't even know we really want to talk about this game. I really yeah. wanted so like I, straight in the final words. I really wanted something from this game. I was like, I'm coming off to Banner Lord. I've been controlling armies for the last 99 hours. It took me 99 hours to fucking beat that game, and I was ready to do that in Minecraft. Pretty much, I wanted to control armies, build fortresses, and have a good time. I wanted the brutal legend. I wanted to uh, overlord minions, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, but that's not what this game is. This game is like a weird shadow of all these other games where it wants to be something like that. And it's just, it feels unpolished, unbalanced. It's not fun to play. Like I, after like 30 minutes in, after all the, the glitz of the fantastic visuals wears off, I'm like, man, this game is just not fun. And I played it for what? 17 hours, 17 hours minus whatever, uh, You know, I just sat there and made Nave play for me. And it still never got fun. And it's like my daughter and Jana come by and they're like, oh, new Minecraft. How is it or whatever? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just not fun. So this game is going to be currently a not recommend for me. I I feel like with the way the multiplayer is going, how people seem to be talking about, we didn't play it. But maybe the multiplayer combined with the custom... Uh, customization of like the levels that could be where this game shines even if the campaign just falls flat and is never redefined or i don't know really finished because this so many of the mechanics just don't work the way you would expect them to maybe it's because we're capital g gamers and we were playing on like i played it on normal though and it seemed to make no difference besides just the amount of resources i had but even with so like four times more resources it was still a struggle to do like one mission. And it's like, at least in games like, uh, what's it called over, not overwatch, um, crackdown. Like you're like clearing segments. You're taking down different parts of the factions. And as you take it down, it's like, Oh, if you take down this, the factions won't have as good cars or they, their guns will be de leveled. If you take down this stronghold, I'm like, Oh, cool. We're making progress. It never felt like progress in this game. Everything we did was busy work, basically just for survival. And you always had to be doing something. There was never cooldown time. You couldn't even pause it in single player. It was just always get to work and grind out some, I don't know, whatever, like completing some zones. Go kill some pigs. And meanwhile, I'm like, it's not fun to kill the pigs. There's no incentive to actually, like, spend time enjoying this game. 
your incentive is to get it done as fast as possible with the least amount of resources. Otherwise, it's going to get more difficult. I think one of the biggest problems as well with this game is that like you have upgrades, but nothing ever like visually becomes different. You know, like yeah. it's like it's not like you're getting more flashy attacks or anything. You're getting upgrades, but it's literally just adding numbers to your numbers. Yeah. You never like are able to do anything more spectacular than you are able to do at the beginning of the game. And this is kind of just a game where it's like, how much do you want to clear the map kind of thing? And yeah, I don't know. I, there's no charm. There's something that feels very soulless about this. And which sucks because I know a lot of people probably worked really hard on this and everything, but it just, it does way too many things, not good enough. And it doesn't do any one thing well. So it's like, it's a passable game. And I think that 70 on Metacritic is like where it deserves to be. It is a game. Yes. It is indeed a game. If you're playing it on Game Pass, you're probably like a lot less. Like, I feel bad for all these people on steam that paid money for this especially that much 40 dollars for this game yeah i feel bad about the time i lost and i didn't pay anything outside of game pass which i was going to pay for anyways like i thought like i mean i could probably jump back in and i could easily finish this game in another like five hours or something like that and then i'll be able to chalk it off my list i don't think it'd be worth it i'd rather play anything else for those five hours yeah, and it really sucks too because I've been thinking about Inscription this whole time. So I think maybe I've been giving this game the benefit of the doubt because I dropped everything for Inscription because it's like it's gripped me quite a bit. And so I thought maybe this game was suffering from that, but it seems like I probably went, I'm pretty close to the mark, even with the infatuation that I've got. All right. So, well, was yours a not recommend? Recommend? Not recommend. Yeah. Because I don't even know who this is for. Yeah, it, you know, kids it's too childish for adults, and it's too complicated for kids. I don't know. Uh, with that, Nave, what are we playing next week? I don't know. That's the rare non-recommendation. Redfall's coming out pretty soon, but I don't think we're gonna have time to, have time to play it. You know, this is gonna be <sighs> a little weird. But uh, after we got done recording the last episode, I went downstairs and I picked up Perfect Dark Zero. And I started playing that while JP was over. Jesus. And I logged in. The servers are active and it has an online co op game, game, you know, playability. We should play Perfect Dark Zero. <laughs> Perfect Dark story Zero. Co op. <laughs> it's co op story mode? Yeah, the story mode is co op online. Dude, I'm so fucking down. <laughs> Dude, I yeah. am so unbelievably down to do I that. I played the first mission though, and I'm like, oh man, this is dated. It is yeah. so dated. <laughs> All right, maybe do that. Maybe Redfall. Maybe we'll find something better. I don't know. Are you guys? Are you listener? Write in. Are you excited for Perfect Dark Zero? No one's excited. <laughs> this is like the problem is like so many of our game picks lately have just been I want to do this, which of course it I feel like, that no one wants to hear yeah, about. No, like if I saw a podcast and I'm like, oh, what, what games are they covering? Oh, Minecraft Legends? Oh, what else do they got? Perfect Dark Zero? No, I'm not going to click on Perfect Dark Zero. I mean, I might personally, <laughs> but if I was, if I could consider myself the average podcast enjoyer slash game player, I don't think I'm going to click on Perfect Dark Zero. Yeah, especially if you're like going in for like, like oh, I hope they have a really in-depth and thought-out review of this game. I don't know if we do that too good. No. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, especially for this episode, it's like, dear listeners, I know we've been uh, very serious with our talk of uh, crimes in the world and <laughs> disasters and everything else. But uh, I swear, we have fun and play games. It's just this game wasn't fun. Yeah, it got us in a mood. And not only did it get us in a mood, but like our 35 minutes of fucking not being able to record got us into a mood. Whatever. Let's wrap this up. So, Our nightmares. Yeah, we talked about <laughs> God. Thanks for joining us this week, co-op partners. Maybe next time we can all kill some little piggies together. S-